Hey everyone and welcome to Comics from the Multiverse, episode 180, I think. This is a DC Comics podcast. I'm Peter and joining me as always is Matt. Hey, hey, I'm back. Long live the Legion. And better than ever. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. I can't uh, help but yeah, I could be song. described as the Bischoff to your McMahon. Oh, don't, so don't, you... don't compare us to McMahon and Bischoff. Come on, we're better than that. <laughs> wow. Uh, you would send me home to catering. <laughs> Go over there and don't mess anything up. Yeah, so All just, right. Hey, you're going to pay me? All right. See you later. I'll, I'll just fire you too. You're just that's as a fine. scapegoat. That's, 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 that's all you're here for. Uh, yeah, Connor's, Connor's here as well. Yeah, I'm already bored. Yeah, he doesn't have a clue what we just said. The last <laughs> I, minutes of blur. Literally right off my head. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest, Matt. Last week, because normally we do a little wrestling tangent, yeah. and then I'll cut out and put it on yeah. Patreon. Last week, I wasn't sure if I should just do it on my own and just sit and talk to myself for I said, ten minutes. I, said, I said I'd take a twenty-minute nap. It's fine. <laughs> hey, Red. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Or Connor. You, you want to hear what happened on AEW? Not really. All right, here we go. <laughs> Buckle up. Oh. Hey, good. Good thing I missed that. That was not a yeah. eventful episode. Was, it, was uh, it surreal for you guys earlier when I mentioned like, oh, hey, there's a wrestling thing going on? But, yeah, know, like me actually asking something. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're doing this comics podcast, though, uh, as much as the intro might, uh, t- you know, yeah. say otherwise uh, we talk about DC Comics and coming up on this week's show we'll be discussing Legion of Superheroes issue 1 Batman 82 Justice League 35 Lois Lane number 5 Young Justice 10 Wonder Twins number 9 The Infected King Shazam issue 1 plus me and Connor have some Patreon picks to do uh, Connor's going to be talking about Red Hood Outlaw annual number 3 <laughs> 3 Whereas <laughs> I'm going to be talking about Legion of Three Worlds issue 1 uh, so, well, I'll, I'll be jumping on with you there. Uh, yes, cause... I figured you might. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's that's the plan, books wise, for the a little bit of news as well. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll ease ourselves in as per usual. Um, how's your week been, Matt? How how was your week off? Did you have a fun. Uh, well, it was busy last week because we went to Nosbury Farm, and mm. uh, it was not busy. So we got everything that we wanted it done within two hours. And then just kind of put it around, uh, wrote some things. Um, they have a new ride called Hang Time, and it, it's got a, a vertical lift hill. So it it, it, it takes you up, you, you hit, and then you go straight up. And um, it's been a very long time since a roller coaster has made me nervous to the point I was shaking, um, where I had an instant Job moment once I got to the top of that hill because my friend made me sit in the front with her because she pulled the card – don't be a baby. And I was like, well, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a big old baby. And um, you, you won't sit in the front. That's fine. Just yeah. think, if, if you don't want me to do something, just tell me to do it. And I probably won't because I'm like that. But the converse is true. Where if you want me to do something, be like, no, nah, you won't. So yes, I, it was weaponized. There, there's a term for that. It's called reverse psychology, everyone at home. Yeah, right. Yes. Put along. And man's a sucker for it. Oh, I'm a big time <laughs> sucker for it. Uh, <laughs> And so I sat in the front, and so it's called hang time because once you get to that top, it it, it parks you at the right here and makes you wait to do a beyond vertical drop. So it's like a ninety four degree drop, you going like this. But as as I'm sitting in the very front and looking down, who my wife is way too smart to ride something like this, is waving at me. <laughs> I and she looks like this, like a tiny little ant, and I. Uh, Yell, I've made a huge mistake. Uh, <laughs> but you're here, so you survived. Yeah, it was real fun. Uh, turns out sitting in the back is, is way, way worse because uh, you have nowhere to put your feet. It's like a floating chair, mm. and then they lock you in at your hips. So there's nothing here to make you feel safe. And I thought I was going to fly out of that seat, uh, and, I, and I hooked in so hard I still have bruises on my legs. So, <laughs> theme parks. Uh other than that, though, it was great. I ate entirely way too much junk. Still still paying mm. for that one a week later. But that's what you do in theme parks, right? Now that you guys know, you guys don't go to theme parks. I've been a theme park since I was in my teens. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's one of my subculture things. The, I, the last I time I went to one, I, I was in school. Yeah. Well, I, I found this out, like, 
because I, I forget how deep me and my wife get into this stuff. Like, we watch Theme Park YouTube, and a lot of our friends are into the same thing. And I forget, like, that's not normal. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Most people go once every so often, maybe. Yeah. And even someone like our friend James, who's really into the Disney stuff and and whatnot, I don't think he's been to Euro Disney, right? And, like, you know. I don't know. <laughs> France, I don't think he has. So, yeah. and I figured that would be something he'd be all about. But I guess there's not a lot of crossover in our nerddoms and theme park nerddom. Apparently like not. I thought there would be. Yeah. That said, Connor, you got you got to get to Batu. I know, I know. One of these days, got to <laughs> get there. Maybe I'll get there in like a decade. <laughs> we, we, we got a commercial now. They're starting to show because Rise of the Resistance is getting ready to open. Like soft open and... In, in, on both coasts. I think these are yeah. Star Wars words, but I'm not 100% sure. They, they are. They are. And uh, they're, they're hey. showing footage of the ride. And I'm like, you know, I just went. And we're like, we're going to let it calm down. But now I got the urge to go again. And yeah. It's a yeah. Do you want to know something cool, Matt? Uh-huh. We're like three days away from Pete loving a Star Wars thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are you going to get him to watch the, the Mandalorian? He's agreed. He's watching the first one. Yes. All right. Well. You, you let me know when you guys are recording because well, I might have to jump on. Well, I mean, I, I'll also, I I'll also, I will also be seeing and reviewing episode nine because. Well, of course, that's that's your duty. No, 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 that's not my duty. I was not going to do it. I was just going to opt out. But I've got a deal. Uh, oh no! With uh, what did you do, Connor? <laughs> no, not with Connor. Not with Connor. I have a deal with Tyler, who's just uh, returned to Patreon dum uh, this month. <laughs> And he's going to be making me and Connor read books later this month. And I've got a deal with Tyler who said, and I quote, if you see Star Wars Episode 9 and review it, no bad books for at least a year. So... To be fair, the books he's chosen, yeah, not bad. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm feeling like he's not a gifted negotiator because... <laughs> uh, I would have driven up a little bit more of a bargain to be like, well... <sighs> and and Pete's basically trying to rope me in to do the review with him just to have some balance, I think. What review? Uh, episode 9. I don't care if you do it, I'll do it, man. Hello. Matt'll do it. Matt'll be there for <laughs> I have not missed a Star Wars review since they came back, guys. I'm not going to start now. <laughs> Matt'll be there for Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I like to think I'm the midpoint, although I don't feel like I'm the midpoint. As, as we get farther, I, Pete's I, dragging it in the other direction and i'm going more towards connor's direction pete's getting uh, so, like i don't think i've moved any further than where i was but no. Pete has definitely moved further yes uh, and you've so maybe drifted a touch into work. i've drifted a touch I, I and it doesn't i i'm very attuned into whatever's of the moment sometimes and right now one of the podcasts i listen to about nerd culture binge mode is covering star wars so i'm i am hooked in mm. um as I, as I was cleaning up the house this morning, listening to their their mailbag uh, episode, and they went they went deep into like the ships and I'm their favorites. I'm really excited whatnot. for all the shows we're going to get because uh, uh, I think it was one of the the investor things that, that I was talking about like just the other day that there's more Star Wars shows that they haven't announced, but they're they're actively working on. So yeah, yeah. yeah and, that's and great much, news. Yes, and much, well, and much like the Marvel side, I feel like sometimes superhero stuff is much more, you know, adept to be to be shown on TV. The episodic nature, yeah, and whatnot, and and same goes for Star Wars. I mean, episodes in the, the title, hey, the main hey, ones. Some of my favorite Star Wars stuff is is Clone Wars yeah. and Rebels. Oh, it, easy. Um, I'm, I definitely am going to have my wife watch some Rebels because she loves Chopper. I don't know if we've been over this. Yeah, um, yeah, there we have. Yeah, so, and she wants to, next time we go to uh, Star Wars Land, she wants to program a joy to be like Chopper. You can get one of those. Oh, that's great. Bit, Chopper is such yeah. a, a fantastic little dick bag. Yes, and that's she, that's what she calls him, the dick droid. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, she, she needs to know Chopper. Uh, more plus i still need to watch the finale <laughs> I, i'm bad what the hell is wrong with you uh, the disney app was acting up and now everything's going to plus I, right re really what you're saying is you don't want the man tears wait what the man all oh, the man tears yeah yeah, yeah. uh 
Well, there's that, and it's it's a lot like I've never read the final chapter of Harry Potter. <laughs> I've never finished it, so it's still there. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I've seen the movies, right? I've seen that, you know, so you, on right, screen. You read seven books, barring the last chapter or the final book. Oh, and I've read them multiple times, but I've never <laughs> read that final chapter. That's so weird. It is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well. That's like reading 99 issues of, of King's Batman and then going, I'm not reading 100. <laughs> <laughs> We're close. We're, we're close. Have to, little, little peek ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, man. Strange Adventures, though. That's what's keeping me afloat. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, no. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, last week I, I did an interpret of dance on stream. That was a thing that happened. Uh, I no bad books for a Star Wars review. Tyler, we need to talk, bud. <laughs> I should have him a little bit more for no bad books. Uh, no, no, I think that's a fine deal. It's a fine yeah, deal. Of course you do. I think he <laughs> should have made you read the Star Wars book. And that yeah. no, 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 no. Just give him Lando. Give him Lando. Lando's Charles Soul. Um... Uh, what's his name on Event Leviathan? Malief. It's like one of the greatest new Star Wars books. Think yeah. he'd enjoy it. It's like a nice tight five issue mini. Can't yeah. Go no. He's... Then, then I think it's fair. I feel like. <laughs> no, he's Maybe... picked. No, he's and picked American book. Vampire. He can't change now. So. Oh god damn it! Did you give him something that good too? <laughs> Which uh, from the start? Yeah, from the start. Ah, uh, the origin of Skinner Sweet. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to it, so I'm, I'm more like happy with it. Jump in for, alongside, oh. anyway. Oh yeah, <laughs> it might be as much as I love my superhero books, right? I think the first, the first set of American Vampires, the first five or so trades, might be my favorite work of comics ever. Really? So yeah, that's um, bold. I mean, I yeah, like yeah. it. I, yeah, I do. I really like it. Oh, favorite survival. ever is yeah, survival of the fittest is. Up there, it's in my top three. I think stories of all time. On that subject, Matt, how did I just want to? I mean, we read your thoughts, but I just uh, how good was Basket Full of Heads last week? That was oh my oh man, it was good shit. You you can tell such that, good uh, shit. Yeah, as <laughs> um as as much as it felt like Stephen King because of who Joe Hill is, you can also tell that he loves. 70 Spielberg because mm. there's a lot of 70 Spielberg and I felt like where they were was Amity I mean it's called Brody Island and stuff and just the relationship with the cops and, and everything and then you go in and you throw a Viking axe in there <laughs> uh, and then I got to the end and I got super mad not, not enough like Viking upset. axe action no it like I'm into this and then I turn the page and there's no more it, well, it, that happened during Breaking Bad a lot too. Just yeah. as the episodes get going, the credits would hit, and you're like, "Oh, I gotta wait." What was so. the uh, What was the issue? We were kind of surprised that Matt wasn't as hot on as us. I guess it was Death, it was Death of Superman, the uh, Dark Multiverse one. Yeah, that's right. okay. It was fine. There's other things I enjoyed more, probably because high expectations. Um, I guess I guess I, I was just at your lowest, like pulling Lex Luthor out of the atmosphere and burning him alive. Uh, you got yeah, eviscerated. Yeah, but it was Moppet Head uh, Luther. That's the best kind. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you do that with Bald Lex, and I'm a little more. Oh, man. That guy? Nah. He's a clone that falls apart. Let's not forget that. The controversy. Well, this time he burned apart. <laughs> yeah, well, before he had a chance to fall apart. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. No, basketball heads rolled. The uh, as pleasantly surprised by the Outsiders annual. Oh yeah, that was fun. the one we were different as well because I was I was just kind of lukewarm on that. And um yeah. and the just the the Batman annual as well. Me and Pete were both like, yeah, I mean it's all right. I liked that, probably yeah. because it was done in Alfred's voice and not. You know, if, it, if those stories are coming from Bruce, I'm like, oh stop, putting yourself over. But coming from Alfred, it's a little bit different. Yeah, um, Matt, you, you were really different to, to us last week, actually. 
It might because I read the majority of my books on the way down on vacation. It might have been in a different headspace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was in such yeah. a good mood that like every yes. book could have ended because of Batman, and you'd still been in like, oh, it was not bad. Uh, let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> there were parts that did annoy me in, in the annual, but for the most part, which was the book? Yeah, because it was the the Batman annual had because Batman. Uh, one of the stories, yeah, one of the stories was basically he, yeah. he talks his way out of this, like, entity, this, like, an old dimension, because he's, like, he's like a Batman. <laughs> Didn't like that. But the, the two I noted uh, were really, really struck. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no. Uh, more more Hill House, please. Yes, yes, that, I'm looking forward to it. last week. Yeah, Dollhouse is, uh, what's it, it's next week. week. Yeah. So, oh, next week, cool. Yeah, so, uh, looking, looking forward to more of those. Um... So I uh, will do. I yeah, will do some uh, some some news, some DC news. Uh, so Shazam, not not a little delay. Uh, I have to say, I I still hate how they do these headlines because I feel like sh- the headline Shazam Nine postponed seventeen weeks sounds like it's been pushed back another seventeen weeks. That is not what's happened. No, this one is a two week delay. I think I think it should have reset once they resolicited it. Yes. Yep. So it should be reset two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a two-week delay. That's what it is. It's now coming out on the eighteenth of December. Uh, so it's just it's just pushed later in the month. It's just not that it, big a delay. <laughs> it's not. It's it feels bad. Not because of the the seventeen weeks that makes it sound way worse, but it feels bad because it was it was cancelled and then resolicited. Going okay, we've got it back on track now. Yeah. And then here we go again. Is this how it begins? I mean, we'll see. I. I... I wouldn't think so, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that either if, if it did start getting pushed and pushed and pushed. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't get upset with delays. I just, I, I've stopped caring. Everyone always gets in a bit of a, a ruckus about it. I just, I don't have the energy to care. <laughs> it's like, okay, here when it gets here. Yeah. Especially with what's going on right now, it feels a little bit superfluous. Uh, the story that John's is continuing to tell. Yeah, yeah, it's very disconnected from all the Dark Multiverse mm-hmm. and Secret Six and yeah. whatever else is happening. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's just that. Uh, and then we have a new artist has been brought in for the Infected Deathbringer. Uh, this is the December 4th book um, that Zoe Quinn uh, is writing. So Ben Oliver uh, is... is uh, it, was solicited, it was solicited as Ben Oliver, but it's actually going to be Brent Peoples on the art now. Uh, that is the change. So that is the uh, the infected Deathbringer, which is out in December. Uh, I think a little disappointing. I'm a, I'm a fan of Ben Oliver. I'm not. A, I don't know who uh, Brent Peoples is. I'm not familiar. So maybe it's still be you know real good, but it's more just disappointment in that I had expectations, you know, in my head, uh, and now mm. that, that now I don't have any idea what to expect. And then the last thing I've got news wise is just that they quietly closed Vertigo's doors a little bit earlier than they they said they were going to. Which I don't really have That's much. Okay. To, I don't have much to say about this. It just I thought it was worth knowing. Hey, Vertigo it was, was actually kind of, yeah, it was kind done. of already gone anyway, though. Yeah, it? right. And now we have Hill House, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm I'm way more excited for these Hill House comics <laughs> than I have been for I, Vertigo but, in a long time. <laughs> and I was talking to Tim about this uh, a little bit that it feels like Hill House is what Vertigo used to be. Yeah. So, you know, with the the little bit more edge towards horror, but they're they're a bit diverse in that. Yeah, so, I think we were saying last week, you, you could have slapped a Vertigo logo on that. Yeah. And I would have gone, yeah, sure, that's a Vertigo book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, that's and, okay. Yeah, like, I'm fine with that. And I know Vertigo has a lot of its fans and whatnot, but I think they're still printing out. Like, Vertigo has become like a like a vintage label at this point, right? Like, they'll put out the, the Swamp Thing stuff and the Hellblazer books still, I'm sure. Yeah, I think the reprints are still presumably coming out under Vertigo. Yeah. Banner, but I, I have no know. idea. Maybe they'll re- re- rename it to Black Label. Maybe I don't know because, like, you know, like the the Hellblazer books, they're like twenty three out of like thirty five volumes in. Oh sure. Well, they may mm-hmm. well they may finish those off with Vertigo, but I'm wondering yeah, like, if they, if they ever like come back and say do Hellblazer Omnibus like volume one eighty three or whatever, yeah. like they may be like yeah. rebranded as Black Label. And, they might. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that they kind of Vertigo endeared itself to a, a group of fans. Unlike, I don't feel like Wildstorm gets the same kind of. Thing, it, it didn't you know? have the mass appeal that I mean, no. you don't know, it has its fans, mm-hmm. um, but it never got the, the the mass market appeal that that some Virgo books did. Yeah, so I'm just I'm, I'm thinking about these different imprints and you know kind of what they've been replaced by. And, There's really no similarity to Wildstorm. 
And uh, it's know? kind of funny with Vertigo that there's probably only yeah you know, less than ten huge books from Vertigo mm-hmm. that, that hit the, the the mass culture as a whole. Um, but mm-hmm. it became enough that oh no, everyone kind of knows. Okay, that's what Vertigo is. Uh, yeah. Well, at, at a certain point, it wasn't American Vampire through Vertigo. It was, yeah. 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 So. I mean, yeah. I'd argue American Vampire was the last big success from Vertigo. Yeah, and I think I think Scalped was too. Was Vertigo? Yeah, Scalped. Vertigo. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and that that's not so much horror as you know, gritty noir. Um, so yeah. I gotta finish that. I read the first three volumes, and it's really good. It, but it's super. It's like a super downer. Like it's not fun, Aaron. It's serious, Aaron. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'll check it out at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all I saw in the news, but Connor said he had a few things. Yeah, a couple of the little bits. Um, so a couple of the, the giant issues that they've been doing, uh, DC War Giant Issue 1 and Teen Titans Go Giant Issue 2 have been uh, postponed indefinitely. They they claim they'll resolicit both at a future date, but as of right now, they're just cancelled. Yeah, I, I did see this. I just ignored yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I just because I know there's there's new material in them, so people might care. Yeah. Um, same goes for uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths giant. Uh, the first one of those has been pushed back a month. Um, I say that again because uh, there's 24 pages of new story um, in in these. Uh, so it's now coming out on January 15th instead of December 18th. Um, interestingly, both dates kind of line up with CW's Crisis. Uh, on either end of, of yeah. that, so probably why I mean, they chose that to start. I mean, crisis and putting together good material now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't even watch. Right. I'm just basing it off of your guys' Twitter exchanges. Uh, I'm saving time until crisis starts. Then I'll watch crisis and be done with it. The body. That's all I'm going to say for this week. Yeah, I, I want to say by the way, it's uh, it's Barry with an I. Wait a minute. What is going on? Do you really want to know? I mean, a berry with an eye. Like, what's this? It's an app. It's an artificial intelligence app uh, for when Barry's not around so that fake Barry, the app, can tell them how to make decisions because he's such a good leader. Yeah, yeah. So it's based on Barry's personality. It's it's B-A-R-I. So it's obviously an acronym for something, but I was too drunk to have any idea what. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, jeez. I uh, I do have one other bit of news, which is a bit bigger than those other two. Um, uh, Inferior Five, you know the the mm-hmm. post uh, which invasion event? invasion. Yeah, that post invasion book. Uh, that's been halved because it was uh twelve issues. Uh, yeah. it's now six. I guess sales have not been super hot on that. Uh. And they did That's... this really quietly. So they just kind of on on the new issue this week. It just says six issue miniseries instead of uh, twelve, like it had been solicited for. And the first two issues said on the cover. Um, so sucks for people who are enjoying that, I guess. Well, and just to have it like that, not like nine issues, you know. Yeah. But the pacing is going to be so off. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're going to have to completely adjust yeah. after the first issue to to now yeah. the fact that they have to squeeze into six instead of twelve. Yeah. So, and one came out this week too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was issue three came out this week. Yeah. yeah. So, so presumably, yeah, it'll be the the first three will be paced for twelve issues, and then all of a sudden yeah. it's going to ramp up <laughs> yeah. for the last three. <laughs> yeah, it it really sucks for anyone who was enjoying that book. But I mean, definitely. I guess sales were just that bad. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the Neil Adams books still rolling out. That's because you put Batman on a title and it'll sell well enough. Apparently so. Yeah. I want to fight that and be mad, but I'm not reading it, so what do I care? (laughs) (laughs) None of us are reading it. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's weird. It's like, I feel like. It was when the Dark Knight 3 Master Race was coming out, and it was like continuously selling like one of the best selling books every month. Yeah. And I knew no one in the comic like, book community on the, on the internet who was reading it. And it's like, who are all these people who just buy Batman books that make them sell so well? But none of them actually talk to anyone. I don't even know if this was just Batman. It was, hey, this is a Dark Knight book, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's the same logic, though. I mean, like, like it always seems to be like these books that always seem to sell a lot, despite the fact that no one uh, who's in the comic book circles on Twitter or whatever ever is reading them or talks about them. It is speculators it, who buy it on name alone. Uh huh. I guess uh, if speculation is still a thing, I mean, it is. Oh no, it is. I know is people. It? Oh yeah. Yeah. Speak I know to people. any 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 uh, comic shop employee, and they'll tell you it's mm-hmm. a thing. So weird. It's it's why whenever there's like key issues that come out, and you know they have uh, only a tiny bit of advance warning, they'll off like shops will be like, hey, only one copy per customer or whatever, mm. because the, the, the speculators will be in there when, grabbing them all. When they relaunched Justice League, that was my shop had a sign, one only, please. Um, and it didn't seem to make much sense. But I talked to the owner. He's like, yeah, word gets out, and everyone thinks it's going to be worth more when it's really just a number one that. In this yeah, day and age, it, it's it very rarely is worth more. But the yeah. the fact is that they have to it's, do it just to keep the, enough copies for you know the, the regular customers that they actually yeah. ordered the amount for. Right, and then uh, it's stuff like like in um, in Venom when when there was that reveal with the the all black Necro Sword. Yeah, that in turn now made the first appearance of of uh, not Noel but but the other guy Gore. Yeah, the God Butcher. All those skyrocketed. So, um, but again, it's, there's no science to this. It's how much people are willing to pay. So yeah, just read them cause you want them. Like guys, yeah. let's, let's stop trying to get rich off comics. That's, that's kind of how the free market works, right? <laughs> Supply and demand. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. But when you got people gaming up sure, at the top. But, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But in theory. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about comics then. Coming up first this week, uh, Legion of Superheroes, issue one. Brian Michael Bendis writing, Ryan Sook on art. So Connor can sit there and uh, be bored I, for I, more time. I will say is I almost bought this issue, not with mm-hmm. any intention of reading it, but my but, shop was giving away the rings if you bought the issue. And I thought, my, my, they didn't order enough, uh, so my, I didn't my, get a ring. My and shop I'm had like a, a cup full of the rings on by the till that they were just giving out if you bought an issue. And uh, I was like, eh, but kind of a lot of you know just, just for the sake of the ring i thought eh, probably not yeah yeah i really want a ring <laughs> i gotta i gotta find one now i'll, so, I'll buy another one i i don't mind i need the variant my shop didn't get any of the if, if i'd realized that i'd have uh I'd, I'd have got one for you eh, that's all right <laughs> um so i'll just start by this it's a legion i'm still very excited i i finally started to feel what connor says about bendis uh in this issue um so i should definitely yeah. not try this out then i now it might be because i'm used to a different version of the legion um and this throws you at the beginning into bendis's stuff like instantly um there was just a lot of stuff going on in this issue i got very excited when john finally shows up um not that it was bad per se it was just a lot for for an issue one uh so that's really my only negative takeaway now now i'm ready to to praise this book (laughs) that one thing out of the way now i'm going to praise it yes (laughs) yep yep just the lot lot of stuff to take in i might have to give it a reread um just before the next one comes out so i have everything straight but this this is the legion this is this is all versions it it hits what it needs to um with why they were founded, why they're so diverse, uh, even little pieces of the character. Like we, we get to meet Ultra Boy first, and you know his he's a little bit more of a sort. I don't want to say militaristic because that's not what he is, but he's definitely a a what's the word? I don't want to say a rough character either because that makes him sound bad, but. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what you're trying to say, so I can't help you. <laughs> no, he's so so in this they, they they use his origin that his his dad's the like the the guy that that focuses the military for the United Planets, right? He's so there's like a a a, a authoritarian streak behind Ultra Boy, right? He's kind of tough on everybody. He has this kind of chip on his shoulder, if you will, and that came across immediately. In, in the new Bendis one, so so that was good. Same with uh, Wildfire and and his his goofiness, 
here where he's you know he's a living fire character like he has to be in a containment suit and, um, but yeah so yeah man it's it's legion i'll, I'll give it that much <laughs> Okay, so we start off in the Bloodhaven sewer system on planet Gotham, um, and we have this chase, uh, sort of going through Ultra Ultra Boy here. Mm -hmm. Is that who said this was? Yeah. Yeah, it's Ultra Boy. <laughs> um, look, there's a lot of characters in this. It's it's hard to take them all in, and it doesn't help that I read this and another Legion book at the same in the yeah. same day. Um, yeah, yeah. I took a lot of names in today, and probably left a lot of them behind. Does it do the thing that a lot of Legion books do with having the the names in boxes next to them, like yeah. repeatedly. If not only does it not, do it, it does it in continuity. <laughs> it does it as part of the story to where there's so many of them, it's part of the technology that it pops up so you know who they are and where they come from. I wonder if that'll continue doing because most Legion books I've tried do that like every issue, even with the characters that you should already know by issue like four. They still pop yeah. up and say that. No, it, it was a thing throughout the three boot Legion too. Just to remind you, because there's so many stories yeah. going on, that it reminds you where they're from and what their power set is. You know? So, yeah, um, there's so many of them. Rimbor, yeah. Yeah. So, like, Ultra Boy would come up, Ultra Boy, his name's Joe Nah, which that always <sighs> cracks me. And it'll say Rimbor, where he's from, Homeworld. And then you get a little bit of there. So, yeah, yeah. like Pete said, it's in continuity. So, when John meets them for the first time, it pops up. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, if you're up with Dead Space, the, the HUD and that, that's just kind of like floating in front of you. It's kind of like that, but it's behind your back. Uh, so, cool. yeah, so uh, so Mordru's got this uh, device, this, this explosive device um, mm -hmm. that uh, could potentially, you know, you know, in, you know, save a world, but can also destroy it. Um, and we have some other Legion members show up, the Karate Kid. Um, yep. I don't know why I didn't know there was a Karate Kid in the Legion, but... Yeah, Karate Kid. Yeah, there's a Karate Kid in the Legion. Hey, man, go go back and read the Lightning Saga while you're at it, Pete. Like, <laughs> I know you don't have any time, but he plays a pretty crucial part in a Lightning Saga. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I, thought was, I thought it was more of that sentence. No. <laughs> no. So they fight Mordru, he turns into a big pink cloud of smoke or, or whatever. Um, doesn't go very well. And... Yeah, uh, it turns out inside this this container because you know up to this point we were thinking oh it's a, it's a bomb or it's like a it's some sort of super powered thingamajig and when they open it it's actually Aquaman's trident and it's like whoa what's going on here uh, what do we do with this um, and that's when we cut to Saturn Girl and Superboy uh, John who are traveling through time this is him arriving in the thirtieth century yeah. and meeting the Legion um, and. You know, we we don't get to meet like a lot of the characters yet. A lot of them are standing around, um, and we see. Although the one thing about these name tags within continuity is that they're kind of obscured at times. Like they'll intentionally have them at an angle, or like there'll be a a, a a speech bubble in front of them, or yeah, or something like that. It shows that they're actually in the world. It's not just text that we're that's for there for us. You know, it, it almost creates a third dimension. There. Yeah, honestly, there's not a whole lot of plot in this. I mean, Rose, who obviously we know is there, tries to talk to him at one point, yep. but a lot of it really is just establishing what the world is like and explaining mm -hmm. the Earth as a planet kind of doesn't exist in the way we the we think of it. Yep. It's just now all these domes that are connected, and um, you know, because John's like, wait, are we trapped like Candor? Like, yeah. why's the glass in the sky? This, the, yeah, I, you know, there's not a good relationship between bottles and Kryptonian skies, and like, no, it's not quite like that. He goes, well, why don't we fix Earth? And they go, now that this is fixed. Yeah, like, they, and they set up that this entire like city is all the Legion headquarters. So mm -hmm. uh, it does all this. Um, and, you know, they, they kind of just sort of show them this stuff and explain it to them. So there's, there's quite a few double page uh, layouts of just sort of all these various things. And then eventually the characters with the trident like show up and like, hey, we found the trident. <laughs> What are we going to do with this? Uh, and John's like, "Hey, my dad knows him. That's, that's like Superman's. That's like his best friend." He's like, "I thought, I thought the original Batman was his best friend." Original. <laughs> <laughs> original, yeah. So there, there's something there. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but sure enough, uh, this this evil army shows up. Um, what were these guys called again? The uh, Haraz. Yeah, and they're they're pretty bad. They look like they're going to be the 
the the big bads for this first arc at least yes are they working in conjunction with mordru or is this i uh, think so yeah because they they were trying to get the uh the trident and mordru showed up and there was all that um but yeah it, again a lot in that first issue to take in you know, you know, not, funny? not a lot of story though. yeah not a lot of story but there's a lot to take in like characters wise and like villains were mm-hmm. setting up um but i mean it doesn't really make you really have to like the only one that's really talking to john especially we have to know is Saturn girl and then it's just the three that are on their Sarah. own at the start that we kind of get to know a little bit uh so you know and then the final page is just kind of teasing uh teasing the the, the villain uh the the uh, madam honor president yeah, so the United Planets president, um, it, it looks like something's up there. Um, I'm curious to see if we're going to get to RJ Brand in that part of the Legion. Because he's kind of the one that, that, that helps them get the charter to start. Um, mm-hmm. But it seems like they've been, you know, they've been the Legion for a minute now at this point. So, uh, and I'm wondering if, if that ends up something that happens now. Yeah, um... It's kind of a weird issue to kind of... Like, it feels like half of an issue. It doesn't feel like a full issue to me. Yep. It feels like it doesn't have that much story in it, so it kind of feels Mm -hmm. like, hey, we're just like... John's arrived, and here's some basic details about the the world and the mythology right now. But there's so many names flying around, it's hard to take them all in. Uh, To the point where, you know, when I opened this book back up for the start of this conversation, I was quickly skimming for, like, okay, what what are these characters' names again? Because I don't remember any of them. (laughs) I don't remember Whalefire or whoever. This sounds, like, even more decompressed than usual, by Ben's standards. Yes. Uh, Yeah, maybe maybe a touch. Oh, and and a lot of it is you'd have to, like, you don't have to come in from Superman, but it helps if you're familiar with why John's there. Like, there's no reset up of, like, hey, you helped found the United Planets with an idea. Mm. This is, we, you know, we need you here. Um, That's a little bit frustrating. Just, you know, it, as they're yeah. marketing it as this whole issue one, hey, come right. on board and check it out. Right. I, I feel like you, you should cater to people who haven't been reading Superman. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm. but yeah, no, it, it's, it's setting up uh, him and Imra big time as kind of. These are POV characters can be going forward. Yeah, uh, and and that, that's cool. I like. I think Bendis has said that Saturn Girl is effectively the leader, um, which kind of breaks from tradition. That sometimes it's Cosmic Quarry, sometimes it's Lightning Lad. Well, it's always uh, those trio, right? They're always the trio at the yeah, center of it. Well, yeah, they're they're <clears> you know to to borrow from Harry Potter, they're the golden trio. You know, they're the ones that have villain, you know, alternates, you know, Cosmic King and. Saturn Queen and Lightning Lord, you know, as part of the uh, the Rogues Gallery. So they've always been important, and uh, and in the um, Great Darkness Saga continuity, Lightning uh, Lightning Lad and Saturn Girl end up getting married and having kids. So um, yeah, it's always those three here now. Not that it's breaking, but Fitness is already setting up Ultra Boy, uh, Wildfire. He already has a personality. We're getting to know. Brainy shows up a little bit. Um, uh, very briefly. Else. I was about to say something, yeah. but it was in the other book I read. It wasn't this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, But no, but yeah, everyone's there. I don't think this, just off of one issue, I don't necessarily think this is going to scratch that Legion itch I've been wanting it to because I wanted the traditional old school Legion that Pete's reading. In Legion of Three Worlds, right? Like, that's, yeah. That's the one well, I there's like. not there's not much drive in this issue to kind of like propel no. things. No, obviously, I, it's not bad, and I'm I'm into it enough no. to like read another one. Like, there's there was nothing unpleasant yeah. about it. Oh, but I'm still, it, yeah, I'm still. It just kind of exists by the sound of it. Yeah, art's good. Like, it's nothing. Yeah, but so again, it's, it's, so it's very good. It it feels like like pizza at half an issue. Like the the action sequence in the beginning through the sewer system are, are really good. And the character designs, like, you're not going to confuse two characters once you get to know There's just, there's not much of a hook yet. There's not much of a hook. And if this is, like, supposed to grab new people like me, who's not really read any Legion, I don't think it really did anything to hook me on these these Legion characters yet. Like, John's still the only one that I kind of feel anything for, because, you know, I know who he is. Uh, I mean, I I know Sartan Girl well enough from, like, Doomsday Clock or whatever, but it's a different Sartan Girl. Yeah, Yeah, but, you know, when I see him interact with, with... Cosmic Boy, who's one of my favorites, I got real excited, and then we we get away from it. I was like, no, get, 
I want to see John talking to the Cosmic Boy. Come on, man. So, yeah, it's, it's just being a Legion fan is getting used to different versions of the Legion, right? That's just something <laughs> you have to come to terms with. Uh, that's, this is like a, a microcosm version of being a comic book fan, to be honest. It, right? Like, you just have to get used to it. And, uh, yeah. So I, I mean, it's not bad. I, I think um, no. I'm down to keep reading it and see see where it goes. But in terms of all the Bendis issue ones we've had from DC over the past year, I think it's, this is definitely the weakest one because I think all the oh, other ones. Because yeah. like Naomi like really hooked me like and that was a completely new Naomi, idea. Naomi, you know, yeah, his action first his action, action got me big grabbed time. me completely. Yeah. Out, out of interest, uh, how does this feel compared to like Millennium? issue one especially but yeah it's, as a as an a whole i think millennium was probably a better issue because it had more of a focus in what it was doing it, yeah it, i was just gonna say that there was a focus there to show rose and thorn going through time to get to the 30th century or the mm. 31st at this point uh and here it's just like hey john this is the new world i almost felt like this should have been a double-sized issue yeah because the middle chunk of this you know when, when it's john arriving and everything until maybe towards the end it just kind of feels like okay it's going through the motions of okay we have to have all this him meeting everyone for the first time and saying mm-hmm. hello and realizing that the earth's not like a planet like it was before and that's yeah. that's kind of it like which we're already accustomed to from millennium we saw that yeah. at the end um so for that to be treated almost like a surprise it was like, well, who was this for, Bendis? Like, it, the those Millenniums were were subtitled with Legion of Superheroes, right? Like, yeah, it was Legion of Superheroes Millennium, yeah, or yeah, all the way around. So, but... uh, and the, and I told James because he was asking, like, you don't need to read Millennium, but it kind of sets the stage. Like, it's not essential. Like, uh, he compared it to House of X and Powers of X. I felt like if you're going to read X Men, you needed to read those yeah, first. I, I, you, don't, I, I, you don't need to, but it would make it better i think this is just this is a decent but kind of a failure of an issue one and i i say that more harshly than it i really make it i really want it to sound but i think the reason why i'm saying it as harsh as that is because millennium one and two i really liked and i think it yeah. did a better job of making me excited for the series so i'm still excited for the series but i think if anyone yeah. skipped those well, two and just started with this it's just kind of like oh it's just it just feels like another book right yeah. now it doesn't feel like it's doing anything exciting yeah. so i feel like it'll pick up um just based off of his other stuff uh, that we've seen so far. But yeah, it's definitely yeah. on the, the lower end so far of, of business introductions, which is a bummer for me as a big Legion fan, but I'm still enjoying everything he's doing. Like, you know, we'll get to Young Justice, and, and I really enjoyed that, uh, except for Drake, but more on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you did it. Oh dear! What are you giving Legion of Superheroes issue one, Matt? I mean, it was a seven point five. Yeah, I'll give it a straight seven. Like it's fine. It's not. It's not a bad book. It's just, mm-hmm. just. It is just another book that's you know easy enough to read, but it's not exactly hooking me yet. Uh, so hopefully that's something that issue two or whatever can can do, um, and we'll see how it goes. But the art's very nice and uh, a lot of promise for the future. Uh, so issue. Oh, it's issue two. But you know what I mean? The next issue we're going to talk about is Batman issue 82, which is Tom King and Mikhail Yannin on the art. This is a City of Bane we're back to. And I'm almost getting whiplash here from going from John Romita Jr. to Mikhail Yannin. Uh, uh, I mean, if nothing else, I can be positive on something here because, oh, hey, we have a good artist back. <laughs> yeah, if only the story matched and it didn't feel like a third of an issue. Like if, if Legion felt like half an issue, this feels like ha- less than half. Yeah, yeah, this was mostly one fight scene that was like mm-hmm. fine. Like yeah, it wasn't bad, but I mean it yeah. was it was um, fine, and then had some terrible moments. I'm uh, starting uh, to get decompression sickness yes. from Tom King's Batman. Are we are we going to be? Is that is, I'm assuming Connor there is referring to the flip flop of the Nightfall backbreaker moment where Batman yes. holds Bane up above his head and then breaks his back. Well, he doesn't actually get to break his back, does he? No. Oh, true. Yes, he's quite right. Well, he gets he's, he's, he's got him up and he's like, "I'm going to break your damn back," and I'm like, "Ugh." Now as a throwback to something that I hated. And and I am uh, suicide. Uh, so that that's great. 
Uh, it was just that was that was horrible. Like, it, I, I mean, I, I know I've mentioned some problems I've had with Bruce's dialogue over the last you know handful of issues, but like this is up there as terrible. I, I didn't mind that. I did. I did like the the um, you know Catwoman showing up. Uh, you know. To, to help. He's like, well, no, you're supposed to play by the rules. He's like, nah, that was the old me. Uh, Calvin says I don't have to play by the rules anymore. Yes, so I kind of like that. And then we have to go through Cat Got Your Tongue. <gasps> so, I hated that a lot. <laughs> and then and then I saw King and Garrods talking about it on Twitter. Oh, and, 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 and he was like, hey, I'm sorry, I've hit my peak ability now. Anything that you yep. draw, Garrods, is, is going to be worse than this. Yes. And, and he said, I didn't want to put it in there, but I couldn't stop myself. And I think, and I think uh, Taylor commented on it too. He's like, man, you're really setting the bar low for me for Suicide Squad. There's something along those lines. <laughs> so as, as long as he's self-aware enough about that, I'm okay with it. It still was a massive eye roll. Uh, I mean, credit to King, I don't think I've ever gotten the impression that he's anything other than completely down to earth and self-aware of Yo, everything he's doing. Yeah, I, I think that we should make that clear. As much as we're yeah. ragging on some of his writing, not him as a person. Nah, he's, no, he's, he's always came across as a very down to earth guy. I've never, yeah. never felt otherwise. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just okay. Like, I, I, I don't, I, I, like, I hate it as much as you two do, but I don't <laughs> I don't particularly love it either. I got, I got well, to the, the end because I, I think it flows well enough, and I wasn't like having a bad time reading it. But it got to the end, and it said next time, and I went, "Oh wait, we're done." Okay, yeah. I guess that's over. I I, yeah. I don't even have me in it to hate this issue anymore. Like it's it's <laughs> just it's it's such a non-issue because, like you said, like, oh, that, that's it, right? Okay. Yeah. Pun intended. I'm assuming so, there. So if yeah. if I didn't know Phantasm was involved in Bat and Cat. I'd almost be like, no, I'll, I'll pass at this point. <laughs> However, with Phantasm there, I think there's a hope that the Batcat stuff, because it's its own self-contained twelve-issue thing, that, though, it might be mm-hmm. kind of the 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 Mister Miracle it's portion one of, those, of Batman. But I don't know if it is because it is kind of just the last twelve issues of his run. They just put it under a different <sighs> title. I don't know how much of it's um, actually going to. Here's the thing: I wonder, yeah. like, because so much of his run in the last, like, say, twenty thirty issues has been criticized for being so weird and off kilter and just refusing to do the normal mm-hmm. thing. I wonder if, like it's almost become that because he's trying to be like full tom king you know mr miracle style mm-hmm. but he's having to hold back because it's a main batman book and we're getting this weird mishmash in the middle that's not really satisfying i wonder if yeah. it now being its own thing at it, separate 12 issues means he can go full tom king and that actually may be beneficial overall maybe because i'm still really looking forward to strange adventures like oh, me too. 100 yeah. percent yeah for yeah. that book um i just i think i've i'm i'm getting weary I'm definitely over his Batman run and, at and, this point. And also, I'll add on to this. It, Mr. Miracle is one of the best things we've talked about since the start of this podcast. Yeah. So, Oh, yeah. Well, we, we, I've still got nothing easy. bad to say about that book. Yeah. yeah. I just, but I also feel like Josh Williamson on Flash, too. I'm just, I'm starting to feel weary that we're at this number. <sighs> and, yeah. you know. Like, I, especially I feel, with, with Tom King, though, I'm feeling like, we, yeah, yes, we had Mr. Miracle. Phenomenal. But then we had Heroes in Crisis. Mm-hmm. And you know, Batman had had its moments of of brilliance earlier on. It absolutely did. Mm-hmm. And then we've had the last you know thirty issues. <laughs> so I, but, but there's I, still I, bright spots in there. As much as I didn't like Nightmares, there was a couple of issues of Nightmares that I did like. Hey, I'll, st- uh, I'll stick up for that Mr. Freeze arc in the court. I really yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Freeze arc. I, to be fair, I really I think that like was probably longer than thirty issues ago. Even yeah, but I think yeah. whenever we bring this up, we're really talking about yeah. the wedding onwards. That's really what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's fair. And I've seen so much social media about how the wedding killed everything, but I feel like that was the point. The point was that they pulled the rug out from under us, and and people were expecting them to actually get married. And that was never the point. You know, it was all yeah. set up. Oh, yes, Matt, going. Right. Yeah. I think there's a very fair point in saying that that's the the splitting point like even yeah. though i agree that the point was for them not to get married i'm okay with that but yeah. it does feel like i can relatively definitively split this run into pre and post wedding and yeah with a couple of exceptions on either side can kind of confidently call one the good half and one the bad and it's basically since i am batman which is the third arc right it, it has been this weird 
Tom King being experimental, even if it was the double date, right? That was mm. that was after the first one, right? Yeah. After the third trade, I should say. Yeah, that was um, after those three arcs, yeah. Yeah, so like he's done these little things and then that that the penguin story that like we're still not sure about his wife being a penguin or not, right? <laughs> like there's there's that's I've never had the doubt that this is exactly what Tom King wants to do. Which good on DC for not editorializing him. Uh, you know, I just maybe I don't need Flashpoint Batman. Like maybe maybe that's a little a bridge too far. Well, that's what the end of this issue is: is that Flashpoint Batman interrupts the whole thing and says, "Right, Bruce, it's time for uh, the pirate." And he's like, "So he's bringing Psycho Pirate next." And yeah, and you know. it's it's the idea that Thomas Wayne is actually the one behind all this, not Bane after all. Uh, they, which... they 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 don't outrise us. This so let's let's talk about the acid covers finally now. Oh sure. Um, <laughs> I, that's all my shop had, and I'm very angry. Thank thankfully they weren't an extra upcharge. But I, I get to this one, and you turn the acetate cover, and it's it's um, Flashpoint Batman with marionette strings on on uh, Bane, and I was like, wait. So I had to have an extra cover for for this. You could have just left the the Bane cover and have this be the reveal, right? Yeah, yeah, because that's the thing, like that would be a fine cover for next issue. Yeah, but not... that completely ruins the end of this one. Right, and then you get to the Justice League acetate cover, and it's completely a waste of a even of the gimmick. It... Like it's it's that's a weird one in that it doesn't undermine the story in any no. way. Uh, it's and lazy. both are fine images, but they kind of have yeah. nothing to do with each other. No, so it's just it was a lazy effect. But yeah, um, I was gonna say this. I hope this pays off. I hope this is all because I'm still I'm still thinking back to that reveal with with um, with Holly Robinson after the you know she put the seed of doubt in the Catwoman, and yet all the villains standing there with him, and it always felt like a symbolic thing you know of, yeah. of skeets and but and then the flashpoint batman we always wondering like what the hell is the flashpoint batman being there i, I forgot about skeets yeah so um, here's a question more for you matt because i know you just yeah. said you were you were kind of feeling over uh this mm-hmm. is there anything you think he can do at the end to make you go yeah that was worth it or is it just yeah it's whatever it is now uh, it's just salvage no, no, it's kind of what it is. It, it's puttering to an end. I mean, um, unless he is the one that brings back Dick Grayson at the end. Do you know, I have, a, I have a friend who, for some reason, is still reading that book. Yeah. Turns out he doesn't really have amnesia. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> do, 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 spoilers for Nightwing, the, the last annual, which I think was last week. But yeah, I'm someone gonna, told me I'm to read tell it. You. Yeah, I'm going to tell you guys. So you know how they're doing the whole thing of him being a talon at the minute? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, embracing sure. all that, uh, you know, the, the gray sun. The gray sun um, bathroom, which I love. It's, it's Charles Sagan's. The Court of Owls is actually drugging him with amnesia drug to make sure he doesn't remember who he actually is. Oh, when you said he didn't have amnesia, I'm thinking he's pretending. No, no. So he kind of, no. he, okay, technically he doesn't actually remember, but it's not like amnesia in the way that we were all led to believe it's it's right. no, no no it's been actively suppressed and he'll be back soon retcon that reeks of a retcon yep mm. but I, I also feel like king had to remove dick grayson from the equation just story wise even for himself that if dick's around none of this happens to gotham because dick's not gonna let that happen yeah although just on the retcon thing retcon it by all means thankfully yes. retcon it you know yeah. fix it all so we but can I'm have just... dick back yeah, yeah, yeah. man I almost got blocked by a, 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 a wrestler, uh, Carl <laughs> Fredericks. <laughs> Super nice guy. He's one of the young Lions, Pete, that was doing stuff at the G1. Okay. He was teaming with the young guy. But he was a local guy here. And not that I befriended him, but, like, he, you know, uh, he knows who I am at this point. And he, I to- he said something like, why, why be Robin when you can be Batman? And I was like, well, if you can be Dick Grayson Batman, that's way better than Bruce Wayne Batman. He's like, I should block you <laughs> for that. And I was like, Yo, have you read Black Mirror though? If you, I will let you borrow it if you want. Like, uh, so, so yeah. If this all leads to that, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> like, 
bring him back. Bruce quits as Batman. That's fine. Like you, it's so weird that off. we're presu- allegedly running into, you know, okay, we're getting a new Batman under the cowl, and it's not going to be Dick. Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing? If, you got Dick right there. If if it's what's his face, if it's Duke, <laughs> I am prepared to break things down. I believe it's supposed to be Luke, not Duke. That's fine. I like that way. He's a cool character. It, That's he, fine. I mean, he was, it was fine when I last saw him, like, six yeah. years ago. No, it wasn't six years ago. He no, was, it was, in, it was, uh, it was yeah. a detective, I know. Yeah, but I, I liked him as a character. He was a good offset for Bruce Wayne. Um, and if you want a person of color in the cowl, thought... fine. Yeah, I don't know if I ever... I've never really attached to Luke all that much, but I don't know if it's... I think it's just because I've never really given him his own story to make me really care about. Yeah. You know, to the standard where I think he should replace Batman... <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like I've never gotten there, but no, but I if it, yeah, I, I still prefer Jefferson uh, as Black Lightning. That would you know? make more sense. Yeah, like I'm okay with that. How you know? But just don't let it be Duke. Duke sucks. <laughs> like, get me. If we're not gonna, if we're gonna have Dick Grayson, Luke Fox is fine. Like that, you know. that, that's my problem. It's really hard to get excited about it. It's like I mean, sure, it's it's, it's fine. Well, could be, it's, could be all right, but I mean, it just. It feels like putting Commissioner Gordon in, in the... And you're like, oh, Commissioner Gordon's Batman now. You're like, all right, well, oh. let, at least let's count that, down. Like, I'm not saying it went well, but at least no. with that, I can see the 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 reason why people would get excited, well, right? You know, it's, it, oh, hey, yo, this is longtime ally Gordon doing this stuff, you know. Yeah. And it's, okay, the, the police becoming the vigilante. It's, I can I can understand the, the point. Um, oh, shit. Whereas, you know, Luke is like, I mean... Sure, he's been around. He he, he does yeah. some stuff. I don't think I've I've never known anyone to be a huge fan of of Luke, really. No, and that kind of makes him a blank slate and almost perfect to be, you know, uh, a new Batman. Whoever who's ever coming in can kind of mold hey, in what direction. Yeah, he yeah if to the go. material is good and it sells yeah. on him as a new, and, and I say of that Batman, someone could call me a hypocrite because you could say the same about Duke, but I just I've always felt like Duke has just been. I, honestly, I think if if anything else, that's just a recency bias in that yeah. you've experienced Duke more recently and you, yeah. know you dislike him more. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but I'm I'm totally okay with someone else taking over for Bruce. Like I've, that's never been an issue. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, um, just, just yeah, just not Duke. Hashtag not Duke. <laughs> if we get that trending, people think it's a college basketball thing. Like that'd be hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. That's all I got that yeah. reference. Yeah, uh, me too. Matt, what are you rating Batman? <laughs> I'm going to give this a... See, I, it's, it's hard to go below a 7 because of the, the art. Because Janin's art is so good. But I think I have to give it a 6.5. Just because uh, it felt like... Hey, don't worry. Carl's going to drag it. We, we follow those yeah, in a second, right. I'm sure. Carl, what are you giving it? No way, further down. I'm giving it a 5.5 just because the eye is really nice. And, yeah. and part of this is... Oh, it's 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 like an extra point for the art because it's coming off of Ramita Jr. <laughs> True. I'll give it a straight six. So Matt liked it the most. Uh, so that's fine. You did that on purpose. <laughs> well, we'll move on. So that'll take us on to Lois Lane issue five. Greg Rucker writing, Mike Perkins on the art. Sorry, are we doing Lois Lane before Justice League? Oh, I skipped yes. Justice League. Uh, no, let's keep it. Let's keep it up. That's fine. That's fine. I'll just swap them in the order. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I've been in a ruck a hole because since the last issue, uh-huh. uh, I, I dug out Checkmate. I'm on issue six of the run. Um, I'm in full ruck mode just like I was for his Wonder Woman. So I'm dialed in. And uh, this is basically Greg Rucka's treatise on how to be a journalist uh, and, and what it, what it means – um, almost like he's doing a service to maybe mm. someone that that wouldn't know, like how how news is supposed to be in this well, yeah, infotainment I, era. I felt you know? I felt that the person on the plane she's talking to at the start when she's flying to Washington is just like this ignorant person who has all these weird mm-hmm. conspiracy theory opinions and how journalism is is well, is done. I, I but, think the problem is they're not weird conspiracy theories on how journalism. Does. That's a very no. Yeah, you know, when she goes, oh, just because you say you're not allowed right. to do it, I mean, what what's to stop you what's from just you? Yeah. yeah, and and just it's, pretending? And then the media plays into this to where, like, well, 
they think that we make this up, so we have to go so far the other way to show them that we're being fair on both sides instead of just reporting, yeah. hey, this is what we're hearing and how journalism works. And so a lot of people don't understand this. Like even even Pete, so far to go to, to like a lot of wrestling stuff about sources and quote unquote wrestling journalism that you can't just take backstage rumors and put them out there as news, right? These are just things you're hearing unless you've corroborated them and, and looked at other sources, like other independent sources to fact check, which a lot of people don't have time to do because in, in this day and age, it's all about who gets it out first. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the complete story, which then feeds the cycle of conspiracy theories and, you know, well, that's not what I heard. Well, I got it from this news, so they're the only ones that are right. And it's like, well, no, maybe you should take it from different, you know, and, and cobble together. Maybe you need as a news, um, what's the word, like a consumer, need to look at multiple sources, not just get it from one place. I agree, which is, which is why I don't think this is a, a crazy conspiracy theory. I think this no. is actually a very mainstream opinion but, um, i don't know i but, i got from, from what this the way this character sounded to me sound like because the way she kept saying like oh i know you don't do that but all these other yeah, people i expect to do this like it sounded it sounded like a racist trying to justify why they like their one yeah. like you know friend no, who's it, not white it, it's okay yeah it's okay i have a latino friend or yeah. you know i have a black that's friend, what it sounded like but, to me so that this yeah. this, this person to me sounded like a very unlikable but, um short-sighted so, individual to me so i don't I don't know how over over where you guys are, what the relationship between the general public and the media is, but since you know 2016, it's it's an almost an all out war. Like people I know and that I work with don't trust the news. Period, and I think that it's it's that might be the most shameful thing is that news has become politicized when it's something you don't want to hear, and I I've, I've fallen victim to that. Like, going like, well, no, consider the source, but then, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I can, I can go back and, and cooperate it. Yeah, you know? it's, I don't think it's quite A lot of people don't want to take that legwork. Um, yeah, I don't think it's quite as extreme here. It is yeah. interesting that there are views like, uh, like the BBC is a, uh, you know, state-owned, you know, broadcaster, right. and they have a, a long tradition of being very, you know, fair news. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, you know, there's... There's debate as to whether or not that's still true, but the what what always gets me is both sides, the left and right, complain of bias against them repeatedly on a on a daily basis on the same story. They will say, yeah. oh, but you know you, this is bias against us because of this," and the other t side will say, "But this is bias against us because of this." Right, and you kind of come out and go, "I hate if you're both feeling that. May maybe there is something in the middle there." <laughs> yeah. So so here, what what happens is. You know, the news will report something that doesn't look good to the right, right? Yeah. So what they'll do to get up so people don't get so mad, they'll they'll cover it from the right angle looking towards the left. But very mm -hmm. rarely do they do it from the left angle looking at the right, you know, because they don't feel like they There's need to pressure, do that. Yeah. Because the right, and at least here in the States, is a very vocal minority. And, you know, they don't want to look bad. So they'll just take it. And it's very frustrating because... You just want the basic news, right? Like, you don't... I don't need to spin. I can put my own stuff on that. And it's very rare anymore. Um, yeah, it's why I, I found... I can't even say this. Twitter, an amazing source for news journalism. Mm -hmm. um, especially on the political spectrum. Because yeah. you can very easily follow uh, people that don't just agree with your opinions. But also, you know, from yeah. the other side. I, and see how they report on the same stories. Yeah. And you can, you really end up with a, a very clear picture. Of seeing it from both sides. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it's much easier to kind of see right. the full picture that way, I think. Well, and I feel too here, it, it, it also goes to your political affiliation. That a lot of people want to claim that they're not too far to one side. Like, again, that's another thing I've fallen victim to. Mm. So they feel like if they just play the middle that makes it feel better for them. And it's like, well, no, it's, you're bringing into whatever, it, it's, you know, the cave in, on Dagobah. You're bringing with you whatever's already with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and a lot of people don't want to admit that, that they're going to read it from a certain point of view. Yeah. Uh, and so here, what I love to tie it back into Lois, 
I love that Lois is like, as a journalist, like, no, we're we're supposed to be not so much a spectator or a judge. We're bringing you the news. We're the messenger. I uh, I, I think that the bias in that level comes from not of how they report it necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, a lot of it is, is what they choose to report, right. what details they include mm -hmm. or don't include compared right. to other journalists. Well, and that's what makes a good reporter, right? I don't know if you're familiar with the Watergate scandal. Yeah. But that's what made Woodward and Bernstein is that they wanted to do the work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is true because, again, I don't hang out with journalists or people that consider themselves journalists. Uh, but from what I get that gets reported, people don't want to do the legwork anymore. They just, you know, all these big news corporations just want the first clicks. So they don't necessarily feel like they need the full story. And right now in, in this country, we have impeachment going on and whatnot. Yeah. And – it's all about now they have to think is how the news is going to cover it. You it's, know? it's because legwork takes time. And if you take mm -hmm. time, you're behind everyone else. And, right. and suddenly and, you're missing out on all the money. Right. And in the age of social media, it moves that much faster. And you're constantly playing catch up. Whereas back in the old newspaper days, they kind of were in charge of the framing. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it's mad, it, especially in yeah. s some of the events that happened, you know, within this, mm -hmm. in this day, you know, like, yeah, UK politics that was you know yeah. before we're, we're in the middle of a, a general election campaign now mm -hmm. um but just before it started if you just watched like the 10 o'clock news one night and then the next night you'd go from uh, hearing oh there might be an election to, uh, called tomorrow and then the following night you'd go yep there's an election called and you'd go okay sure if you follow twitter you would go from 10 o'clock the first night going well there might be an election to there's definitely going to be an election to, oh, hang on, and then, oh, okay, election's on, right. people, and oh, then back to, okay, it's on again. It's, it's almost real again. time now. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and they're trying their damnedest to keep up, and, you know, I don't have the answers for all of this, but I can definitely think that just do your homework a little more, right? Like, stop mm -hmm. brushing things out, because that that's, to me, what's more reckless than anything. We the, There's all the talk about the, you know, the Joker and whatnot, and the media bias there, because people so wanted, like, because it was a bit they wanted the reckless. controversy because because if that's the story yeah. people will click on it because they're interested right and now you have a blowback against the media because of all the stuff and it's like well we'll know but yeah so like the media has become instead of being the 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 bullhorn right like they're supposed to get the thing out now they're what the bullhorn is talking about and it's a bit yeah. reductive so again trying to tie this back into Lois is Ruckus sees all this if you've read any of his stuff. Right, you know he he has a like a a deep love of the machinations of all of these systems, you know, from Lazarus to even his own rating checkmate, and I mean the whole Wonder Woman stuff when she was a diplomat. Yeah. Um, so the fact that like, almost I don't want to say this is a civics lesson because it's really not a civics lesson, right? The lowest stuff in here, but you know, learning the difference between a off the record and a deep source in. And all how that works. I didn't go to journalism school, so learning all of this through the pages of comic yeah, a big, book. A big part of the middle of this book is explaining the mm -hmm. different terminology mm -hmm. and what off the record actually means in terms of what can be yeah. published and what can be used and and so on and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, I like the 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 issue. This is kind of a weird issue, actually. I thought in terms of story, I, I, I had this weird feeling this week where a lot of my issues felt like they weren't full stories. And I think Lois yeah. Lane, even though it's a very good book, is actually also guilty of this because I got to the end of yeah. this and felt like, oh, this is also over. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I also, you know, this is one I like. I love journalism stuff. I love those movies. So this is hitting right in my key demo. So I feel a little bit more, you know, a little yeah. bit more biased towards it. But then I also feel the question stuff almost feels like an afterthought, but I still enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the question Interestingly, stuff. Interestingly, with the question stuff, I think the, the way that ends um, yeah. feels like a super traditional comic book ending of an issue, yeah. right? So in that sense, this kind of felt like a, a rounded issue more than some of the others mm -hmm. because the way you know that builds and it ends, and it doesn't you know go into the next stage, obviously, but where it ends, it's like, okay, that's a, a classic comic cliffhanger. Yeah. So I felt like uh, by ending on that page, it made me feel like I got a full issue, even if some of the lowest stuff definitely didn't. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I, I uh, So far out of the three that we've talked about, I feel this felt the most like a full issue compared to the other ones. About the three so, we've talked about so far, yeah. Yeah, so 
but yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, and it, it's kind of low key, even, even the, the question stuff that we see out of, out of, uh, Renee. Um, I, I really like how, you know, the light coming off like that, the energy, the, the blue, like almost lightning and yeah. you know, all of those scenes. I thought that was really cool. Uh, That's just nice. Perkins. Yeah. Perkins. Also, doing really well. I think having the blank face really helps him because, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a handful of times in this issue where I look at someone's face and go, Ooh. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being blank like that is is uh it's it's perfect for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not gonna disagree. Connor, on that one. There was one really early on, like on like the second or third page, I think the second page, top right panel, uh mm -hmm. Lois just I don't know, the whole facial shape just looks off. Yeah. Uh it was weird. And it, it, it was not then... a not a great start. Yeah, but then as she's talking to to you know a couple pages later, she's talking to Renee, and you know she calls her hot stuff, and they, there's a back and forth there that I feel like the expressions there really work. Yeah, you know, like you could almost take away the dialogue and look at them, and know they're having a witty conversation. So uh, I guess it just depends on what he wants to focus on. Yeah, um, it's kind of, kind of hit or miss in that sense. Yeah, and I, I will say too, some of the like there's that when you first see the question. Mm. And and her her costume's a little bit weird. I don't I don't Renee's not the type to show off that much. It's it's the way the top is like pulled down extra over the yeah. bar for no yeah, real yeah, yeah. reason. No. And I'm just kinda like, all right, that doesn't work. Yeah. The actual but, fight scene where she's fighting all the guys in the uh the mm -hmm. bar or whatever it is though looks quite good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's smashing bottles, nice two page layouts. Uh then we go to the the whole lesson about all the different terminology. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, it kind of ends with Lois kind of using the, uh, the, the uh, statue of the soldiers and talking about them, they're making their choice. And she, the, the, the allusions here are very obvious. She's, she's kind of saying that this, this, this woman who works in the Congress is like, you're essentially a soldier on the front line. And this is a really hard choice you're about to make, as if you're going to tell me whatever you're about to tell me. But, you know, the, these soldiers made the choice they had to on the front lines anyway and did it and got the job done. So that's kind of like how she kind of convinces her to sort of go down the path. Um... Which is, you know, a big moment. And there's a fun conversation when she's talking to Perry, and Clark's kind of in Perry's office. Perry's looking for Jimmy because he wants his bow tie tied. Yep. Um, did uh, anyone else think Perkins Clark looks like on the chubby side? Like, I, I don't know if this is like really intentional. Like, I think he, he's supposed to look frumpy. I feel like his shirt's half and tucked. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. That's how I took it. Well, I thought that in the first couple of panels, it was the the side profile shot um, where, where Perry's telling me, "I'll be married on your own time." Yeah, uh, like that one. I'm like, yeah, Clark definitely looks on the larger side there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, is this intentional? Like, like, like he he wears his shirts like that just as an extra layer to kind of throw people off. Yeah, yeah I maybe. I mean, there was that whole thing that he took acting classes. I forget the the Russian acting teacher that it comes from. Because there's method, and then there's the, this other one. Yeah. And and like he he purposely slouches and hunches his shoulders forward when he's Daily Planet Clark, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I can see that. But I just to me it looked like his shirt's just half untucked and makes him look sloppy, which you kind of want for Clark Kent. Yeah. yeah that's but uh, but no, the be married on your own timeline really popped me. That got me uh, got a good laugh. This, this just really felt like felt like Perry, didn't it? Yeah. And I still want a uh, Greg Rucka Daily Planet bullpen book. So, DC, if y'all are listening to us, let's give him what he wants so we can get this, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Renee's but, whole thing, of course, is she's trying to figure out who the who the who the assassin and who the target was specifically yeah. from that previous assassination attempt. Uh, and it just ends with her torturing the guy, uh, hanging him upside down, Batman style. And uh, as she points out, is a very Batman esque move. Although usually it's over the top of a building, but right. she, she's not got time for that. So. I liked her whole bit as whether whether he can't decide if he's Batman or the Batman. Yeah. Uh, mm. good chuckle. Yeah. Um, no, it was solid. It was a solid issue. Um, I, I, I just, I, I, I kind of felt again that this was like another book for me that I kind of felt like. I, I, like there wasn't a whole lot of advancement in it. Um, there was a lot of like, because because the whole conversation on the plane with the woman at the start, and then the whole conversation with the the congresswoman or her, you know whatever to whoever she was, like 
all of that stuff, it was these long conversations that were stopping to talk about a particular thing. And the conversations were actually mm-hmm. quite interesting in what they were doing, but they weren't exactly kind of advancing things in and of themselves. You know, they were kind of yeah. there to sort of present a little piece about a, a, an idea. Like, this is what this yeah. means, or this is what this is. And... But I also feel like that's been his point. You know, that's been Ruckus' point since it's, the book started. It is kind of a bit more in the sense of, you know, what me and Matt were talking about. Okay, the yeah. journalists need to play, put in the legwork and play the long game. Mm-hmm. And this is you know, literally watching Lois do that. Yeah. You know? Oh, not sure. But I think the balance in this issue definitely felt like it was more that than it was everything else. And because of that, I got to the end and I kind of felt like, oh, oh, it's over. Okay. I, I guess, like, we, we spent so many pages on these other things that when I got to the end of the book, I was like, oh, oh, it's done. Okay. Uh, and that, that's like you know a few times this week I had that feeling. The first three books we've talked about, all three of them, I got to the end and went, oh, oh, that's it's over. Okay, uh, moving on. So, um, but no, good stuff. I mean, I think it's the best of the three books we've talked about so far. Even if I do have some reservations, mm-hmm. um, but you know, um, that's what it is. Uh, Matt, what are you giving it? I'm gonna give this an eight point five. Connor? Uh, a little bit lower. I'm going to go with an 8. Uh, I'm going to go with 7.5. Uh, pretty good. But uh, probably my least favourite of the lowest issues so far, though, out of the five. That's fair. Uh, so that'll take us on to Justice League 35, Scott Snyder and James Taylor in the fourth rating with Francis Manipal on the art. And... Uh, I'm sure I'm going to have to listen to Connor was... Gush about Francis Manipal. Um... Well, I would, but there, mm-hmm. there is a uh, some you know the the extra colorist at the back end. Mm-hmm. I felt the shift. It wasn't as as smooth as Manipal's colors are. No, sure. But but I will say that the way that this is paced, um, very very Francis esque. You know the yeah. different. The different panels break down. Like, I just, it threw me back to No Justice a little bit, which is. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was digging. If, if he'd colored all of this, mm-hmm. uh, it'd be, you know, just, you know, perfect mana pool. As it was, the, the back, uh, maybe, maybe seven or eight pages, I could feel it. Um, it just wasn't as, as smooth. It's just a little bit crisper than mana pool's soft colors are. Yeah. Uh, just, just took away from it a bit overall. I'm going to go to the end. I want to, I want to see something. Because I wasn't really paying attention for it when I was looking. Um, nah, I have no strong opinions. I was, I, was looking <laughs> to, I was looking at the last few pages to see if I preferred the other colouring, just to like have a hot take, but I don't have any strong opinions, so never mind. <laughs> I just wanted to upset Connor, let's be honest. <laughs> that was my... Yeah, you did. But, it changes... Um... I think it's after the big double page spread, and we go to the Pr- Promethean Galaxy stuff. Yeah. And it's after that. Uh, I can. Uh, that's where I really started noticing it. Sure, I really don't want to be a downer on the books this week, but like, I think this issue is fine. Like, it's not a bad issue, but it suffers oh. from being the issue before the big stuff happens. You know, kind of uh, love this issue. Yeah, I like. The, I don't want to say loved. I really like this just because it feels like a prelude to a crisis. It it feels like okay. Something yeah. huge is about like, to happen, and I really felt that. this is this is definitely an homage to Christ on Infinite Earths with the way that Perpetua mm-hmm. goes to Earth nineteen, the Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, she kills it yeah. and wipes <laughs> it out. And yeah. yeah, so and I almost feel like now that the Dark Multiverse is taking that infinite, you know, aspect, so we can wipe out a couple of these Earths. It is, but it's um, interesting that even even as we're dealing with that side of it, she's still acknowledging, well, that's 51 left. She probably, yep. I mean, uh, the art, I think, was probably at its best during the Gotham by Gaslight stuff. Uh, I think that's yeah. where it looked its best. That, that yeah, was yeah. gorgeous. I know, I, I also like the big double-page spreads where you look out across, well, not both of them, one of them you do, you look out across the different, um, on, on Earth, and everybody's seen the Doom symbol, which this is the best version We've had of these because it's you know, not just manifold, uh, but the way that it's handled. Also, it's this is the main book dealing with it, so it feels right. like actually matters in this book. Right, and so you know, and then let's not sleep on the fact that you got Catman, like legit Catman, who I was just complaining about. I forget what book he popped up in mm-hmm. where he was played as a joke, but here he's with his lions in Tanzania, and yeah. I got. I got excited, like uh, uh, and the and the the rocket's red. 
the Rocket Reds uh, in St. Petersburg. Um, and just the way that all the colors get handled, you know, from, from Gotham, it felt Green Lantern-esque, like the spectrum, a little bit. I can see that, um, the way it shifts to, to a different hue yeah, each panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and you got the, you know, in Philly with the Shazam family, you got uh, Mary and, and Freddie there. Uh, and in Louisiana, which we saw in, in Dark, you know, that, that pop-up, so it was good to see that across. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the book, no. the book kind of splits into three segments. It's basically the wraparound is all the characters reeling from all the shit that's going on and trying to figure mm-hmm. out things out. The two main sections, though, are Earth-19 being destroyed by Perpetua, and then the section where they're trying to save uh, Hot Girl and Shane uh, to get the mm-hmm. autopilot to get bring them back to Earth, but uh, Perpetua puts a stop to that. And they're they're left stranded so that kind of st- sets up that part that part of the book um, and it just ends with perpetuals like you know lex it's time for you to like lead the army and mm-hmm. i hate epics like so much like i <laughs> honestly I, Yo, he's, I, I he has a face is... turn coming pete he's got a face he turn coming for this he's got a face turn coming you think well yeah so when we get to king shazam we'll talk about whatever the hell that the batman who laughs has got set up uh, they're they're the true they like like doom is like just pure cynicism right like you know people out for themselves and whatever but at the same time you need a world to to rule or or for doom to take about whereas batman who laughs is like nah i just want to destroy things because it's fun so i feel like at, at the end of this i think that luther's gonna see that Prometheus is a, a big problem and that he kind of yes doom has taken over but Perpetua is not going to let him be who he needs to be. You know, yeah. like, I don't know I Luther just... doesn't serve Luther doesn't serve anybody but Luther. I, I get to and that I, last so I... page, and he he's yeah. he just he's drawing like this maniacal like crazy man uh, who's like ready like he's like thirsty for blood, and I'm just like this is how you draw the Joker. This is not how Lex should look I, ever. I I happen to agree that this is the worst page of the issue. I think it's fine. But coming off of you know the the emotional beat of of Shane Joe you know, crying and being like hey if somebody has to save us please Batman, and then you know and then just cut into you know Lex monologuing and for a little bit like for a page at the end I'm like yeah okay, kind of took took the uh, the uh, emotional climax uh, you know out of it a little bit. Yeah. Also, let's not forget he still has John in there somewhere. You yeah. know, so I think that goes to the face turn a little bit. John, I mean John. Well. John. Yeah. yeah. I was like, who's John? Not John. John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who's just John? You However, speak he of? was John Jones. <laughs> ah, he was, but that's not confused matters. <laughs> so, but no, I just I I feel that last page with him saying I've been waiting for this part with the snare. I just I don't. I haven't been reading comics long enough to know that Luther only serves himself, and I can't see him like I don't I don't buy him serving Perpetua for much longer. So, mm. we'll, we'll we'll see where it goes. Can we uh, can we talk about Jaro? <laughs> you can talk about Jaro if you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, honestly, best moment of the the issue for me was was Jaro uh, near the start. You know, um, Batman's you know he's, he's talking about plans. You know, we we need to get him back here to, to regroup. Uh, you know, and, and there is the pause, and and Jaro, so you mean to say goodbye? He's like, yeah, don't tell me what I mean. He's like, oh, yeah, I read minds, Dad, but out of the way Manipul draws Jaro, he looks so sad when he's saying yeah. that. Yeah. Like well, he really looks so sad, and it's impressive that he can do that. Like give that emotion to to something with one eye and nothing else. Yeah. But let's not forget that Jaros in the story tried to prevent all this from happening by keeping the Justice League from going. Yeah. So he's like, we, you know, he's not feeling like he's living up to his true potential. Um. But yeah, yeah. no, it's it's just real. Manipul's real. He's easy, easy leader in the clubhouse for our this week like mm, probably mm. but yeah yeah that's an okay issue i don't know i, I i've had my misgivings you with haven't, the snyder run yeah so. this has been your your default you know it's okay since the beginning so i'm not surprised you feel that i way. just you know me and connor have been more up I, as per usual i'm just not feeling the weight of it like the I, emotion just doesn't landing for yeah, me what, when, when we were cutting around the different you know uh multiverses uh, you know, uh, worlds uh space like before we got to earth 19 and it's it's building i'm like anyway it ends you know the the, the world already and i'm like 
yeah, I'm I'm feeling this. Like it's 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 feeling like genuinely epic and building up to something huge now, and I'm, well, I'm really excited to get to the end. And and the way that it that, that works too is continuity wise, uh, the the multiverse is out of sync now, right? They're one Earth gone. Yeah. And everything worked off a of balance. So how does this impact that? Now will a dark world pop up now, right? Like. Does, that that have, what, does one have to take its place? Right. Yeah. Is, is that what Tempest Fugenaut's taking an eye on? Like, he doesn't want the worst of the worst, you know, popping up to replace that. So he's policing them or whatever. I don't know. But it's it, it feels like there's a synergy there, you know. And again, this feels like a prelude to a crisis. It does, yeah. I, I will say uh, that, that lack of Jessica Cruz hurt. On that that ghost sector panel well, and, and whatever the hell is going on with Cyborg. I, yeah, I'm very as a as a Starfire guy. This I'm. Uh, like, I, I, this I saw is the god panel. versions of them. You know, this was the when we when we were <laughs> reading it, and we saw the statues and whatnot. This is what they looked like, right? Like. Yeah, I mean, Starfire still looks reasonably like Starfire. Cyborg was just. What, what the hell? And and oh. Jess is just gone. <laughs> oh. Man, I was disappointing. All right, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm done with the book. If you, if you guys got anything else, you can. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right, what are you rating? Uh, I think we're finished gushing. Yeah, I'm gonna give this an eight. Connor. Yeah, I'm going for a nine. I'm Ooh. gonna have six. So. Oh, now who's the degrader? <laughs> I'm having a bad week. Like that, like the highest thing I've given out this week so far is like a seven, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a, it was a really middling week for me. Uh, also, before we move on, my eyes glazed over a bit when she started talking about the judges again. I was like, yeah, I don't care about these guys. Hmm. She's talking about her multiverse, and I'm like, can we not bring them back up again? That's. Uh, I'll be okay. So. Yeah. That's what's fair. next. Well, uh, Young Justice issue ten is next. Uh, oh yeah, Brian Michael Bendis <laughs> rating with Nick Darrington and John Timms on the art. Uh, ah, you got Nick Darrington on that as well. Yeah, okay. uh, Darrington is doing the uh, the Jenny Hex stuff. Yeah, right? flashbacks. flashbacks. Yeah, because uh, we see her in the flashbacks. We see her get the trunk from her mother. We also see that on the same in one day she catches her girlfriend cheating on her uh, from the yeah. looks of it, and then she also happens to walk into a robbery in a bowling alley and like beats all the bad guys. Uh, Who she knows from high school. So if I have one complaint about this this issue, it's that this backstory just felt a little bit uh, convoluted that all this happened in the same day. <laughs> so I'm not huge on Jonah Hex, however I have seen the horrible movie. Um, of course you have. Hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, I like the idea of Jonah Hex. There's a lot of a lot of fun to be had with the Old West character. So when we got to what was in the trunk, I was a little bit let down. Mm. Like, is it cool? Yes. Does it make sense? Absolutely not. However, if they wanted to have a Tales from the Old West book and show how Jonah Hex acquired all these materials, I will read the shit out of it. Just so it makes sense. Yeah, can I just... I want to mention the cover, actually, because the cover has Naomi on it and says, break out the star Naomi joins the team. That is the last Covers page life. where they run into her. Like, Covers, this, this, Covers is the, this is the next issue's cover. It should be. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Naomi, I was waiting for her to show up throughout all of this. And she shows up on the very last Could, page. Yeah, because like, they're, well, they're still on Earth 3. They're, they're fighting the evil, you know, Young Justice team. And, yeah. you know, the fight takes place. And uh, Jenny and Teen Lantern, who's actually the one I'm forgetting, uh, they, yeah. they're fighting on their own. They think they've been abandoned by the rest of the team. Jenny, when she opens her trunk, uh, whatever she pulls out makes her increase in size, like Giant Man style. Yep. Uh, so she's, she's, so she's, she's a, not have powers, but she's effectively going to have powers in the sense that she's going to have some of mm -hmm. these, these doohickeys are going to let her do stuff. So, uh, that's interesting. Um, I did enjoy the backstory for the most part. I thought the art gave yeah. it a nice, uh, grounded feel to it. It felt like a nice, uh, small town story. Yeah. And it, um, it takes up a lot of the page count as well, so it's, it's a good half yeah. the book is these flashbacks. Yeah. yeah. And, and the stuff with her mom being sick, like, you can just tell, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the way that she's drawn. They never, so, like, Bennis never comes out and tells you exactly what she's sick with, but you can just tell that she's sick. Um, and so the, when you get to the end where she's, you know, 
calling out for her mom. It feels that much more tragic. Um, yep. And uh, I, I thought all no, the, there, I, th- I thought all the stuff though, she actually uses the uses the items, and she yeah she goes big, and it's that big two page spread, and she's like punching things, she's reaching out to grab people. There's that great uh, full page spread of like all the team like standing because this is after the kick. Because the worst page in the book, even though it's drawn quite well, is when the cavalry shows up and Drake's in his new outfit. Uh, with you know Bart and and Cassie and uh, Stephanie Brown from this earth, Batwoman, Batwoman, yes, yeah. and it's yeah, all yeah. it's all ruined because he's in this stupid brown UPS outfit. Oh, it's got a big old <laughs> bat symbol on the front too, on his belt. Um, oh, on his belt. I was going to say where? Oh, on his belt. Yeah, it's uh, on his belt. Um, real quick though, before that, you get a uh, Jenny. Jenny has ingrained herself to me now. Um. When she tries to run over Luther L with the truck, mm. and then Connor comes in and is like, uh, points for spirit, Jenny, but against him, I don't like the math. And he, you know, moves him out of the way. So it just it shows the cut of her jib that she was going to run this, you know, half Kryptonian down. Mm. Um, so, and then, then we get to all this other stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fighting. A whole lot of fun. Um, yeah, like, um, and then they, you know, they find out that the the uh, Ultraman here was obsessed with Earth One, and uh, which, real quick too, in Justice League we see that Earth Three, and that when the Doom symbol goes up over it, yes, and they talk about now it's starting to become more of our thing, which is, again, this is why I see people that say you care about continuity too much. You know, because now you're causing yourself problems. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. This doesn't line up with what we're seeing in Young Justice. This is... Not at all. Yeah. Like, is this before? Is this after? Like, when, you know, with Naomi showing up, that seems to be what's going on with Leviathan, you know? So, like, all the Benda stuff lines up. But I feel like the Snyder stuff's taking place another time. But also, with all the different Doom symbols that we saw in all the other books weeks ago it's not lining up and again this is more of a me problem than a you know dc problem but if i'm saying it's a problem it must be a problem um well that was the other thing just like like, aquaman and mira referenced like issue 49 yeah Yeah. and i'm like but aquaman came back in uh justice league a few like just like two issues ago and but all but he's also meant to have done all the stuff in the solo book since he came back as well in this time that doesn't line up at all no and so they've actually just, they, just, they've made it more convoluted by referencing it. Like if they just yeah. pretended this this was like before or after, it'd be fine. But it, oh, I don't yeah, know. that that's other stuff in Young Justice I do enjoy because it it sets up that Ultraman was obsessed with the Earth Zero mm. or Earth One, whatever we're calling it, and that he had a map to the multiverse. Um, and so that's how they end up going home. But Batgirl basically you know, it shows her crying as they leave. You mean Batwoman? Which, or Batwoman, you know. Um, Steph. Yeah, I mean, they just arrive, they arrive in Oregon and Naomi's there and they're like, hey, who are you? And that's, that's, that's the end of the issue. Um, so, no, nah, it, was, it was a solid issue. I, I think Young Justice has been a very enjoyable book. It's not been as good as action comics or as like Event no. Leviathan, uh, but it... It's always very pleasant to read, even if we do have to put up Drake with yeah. the Tim in that stupid outfit. Yeah, now. but so it's like this: if now that we have Jenny Hex as this character and she's this layered, as we find out here, you know, she she wasn't sure what was in the trunk, but it is her birthright, and and whatever. I, I'm okay with having to deal with Drake because now we have Jenny. You know, he's still Tim to me. I'm not calling him Drake. I, mean, I, mean, I think I think Jenny and Teen Lantern have both been introduced well mm-hmm. enough that they're they're growing on. Yeah me and yeah like it's, it's doing solid things it's, it's not necessarily the, the blow away book that maybe we no. we want it to be yet that's not to say that it can't become no, that but i have i have t lantern i have jenny uh and now i have i have connor back and i have uh bart back so i'm, I'm okay and cassie <laughs> so this is this is my teen titans like we're good yeah um no it's solid. It's a solid book mm-hmm. um, with good art, which I think uh, yeah. you know we, we mentioned the Darren stuff. Art's really good. Uh, but the, yeah. the, the Tim stuff in the Earth Three fighting is also very, very 
great. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's got it's very cartoony in its style. Coloring is very bold. Um, it fits the, the tone of the book very, very well. Um, so, yeah, that, that is what it is. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's also not like un, unskippable reading material either, right? Like you could easily wait for the trades on this and not feel like you're missing too much continuity wise. Yeah, definitely not. But it, it is a book I look forward to when it comes out. Like when I got my yeah. poll list, because I, I didn't keep track because I wasn't on the show last week of what books I was getting this week. So when I got to my poll list and it was in there, I was like, oh, yeah, I have Injustice to read. And I got very mm. excited. So, no, no. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, are we giving it? I'm going to, I might be uh, enjoying this too much, but I'm going to give it a nine. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Um, no, I'll give it up. I'll give it an eight. It's the best thing. Out of yeah. the books we've talked about so sure. far, it's the best book, best book I've read yeah. so far. I, I had the most fun with it. Um, as much as I loved uh, uh, Lois this week, this was a much more enjoyable read just because it moved real quick and I, I want more Jenny Hex. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you saying Jenny? It is Jenny. 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 J-I-N-N-Y. Jenny. Yeah, but it sounds like you're saying Jenny with an E. Yeah, it's... It, uh, yeah. Jenny. Jenny. It's, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> Jenny X. All right. All right. Well, I'll take you guys on to Wonder Twins, issue nine. Mark Russell writing with Stephen Byrne on the art. Have oh. you uh, given up on this one now, then, Pete? It's not that I've given up. I just keep forgetting that I'm supposed to catch up, and then it's just too much work because it's like three issues now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's. You might want to wait. I don't want to say you want to wait till trade, but. Um, though we're back on track with this issue, so well, yeah, this feels like it's setting back up. It's building to something proper. Yeah. There's a lot of fun interaction, Superman in particular. <laughs> I love Zan as a tour guide. Just <laughs> he takes his job very seriously. He really does. Uh, and and I love all that. Not not as much as in the last issue where he became a, a casino pit boss and was, and was breaking things, but. Um, he just gets so into the role, whatever it is. He does. I love. If you would have told me last year that Zan from from the Wonder Twins would become one of my favorite comedic characters, I would have laughed. He's he's almost on Booster Gold level with me. Where I'll watch him do anything, and I'll just be like, yeah, that's a that's a Zan thing. It's just on on Booster Gold, I had to try so hard yesterday, yeah, not to buy the Funko two pack of of Booster uh -huh. and, and and Beetle. Yeah, it was I, in my hand, and I was like, and it and it was reduced. I was like. Oh, I'm tempted. Every every time I say I'm done with Funkos, I see a new one that comes out, and I'm like, well, I've lived in my house for over a year now, and I still haven't unpacked my Funkos, so I don't need them. But yeah, I've, I've seen that one too. The the 10 and uh, oh, Booster. It's a nice little two-pack. I'm like, damn. But yeah, so so here we basically get the secret origin of Xan and Jaina. Why exactly? Like, we, we had heard they'd come to Earth as almost like a student exchange program. Uh, with Superman, but but here we get the real reason, and I and I really liked it. Yeah, their their grandfather I think, was mm -hmm. a pretty terrible dude. Yeah, he was basically a grand inquisitor, for lack of a better term, of 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 these new settlers, these immigrants, if you will, to their home planet, and basically found that if they didn't have anything to add, they shipped them to the Phantom Zone. And basically, when people turned on the the judge, on the grandfather, it made it very hard for his family to to be who they, you know, they weren't all like him, but the stink of the family was on them. Yeah. So in order for them kind of to have a, 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 quote, normal teenage life, you know, dad sent them to Earth with help of Superman. Uh, and, and that's why they're here now. Yeah. And, and just... And you've feel a lot of parallel here between you know scrambler and polly you know mm -hmm. with, with her you know now you know being you know the the, the kid of the super villain right 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 that uh, she's well and that's the thing with philo philo wasn't given any other opportunity no. right and so now it's been passed to polly because she wants revenge for all of this and and then with scrambler that scene so we catch up with him that polly tells zan and jana that you know, the program still exists. You can access it from any computer. So as Scrambler's in prison, he goes to 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 enact it. 
and you find out that the computer is no longer hooked up to the to the network. So yeah, someone bought the server. And and yeah, and the underlying part of this, and this is where it looks like part two. So officially, this is Wonder Twins part two. Yeah. If the first six issues were part one, um, and they made like a, an interlude issue. An interlude, and now this is part two, where Philo basically created AI before AI was ready, and that he made it on the the kernel, which which. If you know anything about computer history, the Commodore 64, like the first, like, mass, I think is the first mass marketed personal computer. If, um, if it wasn't the first that was the mass marketed one, first, it, was the, it was the first one that took off. Yeah, it was the first one that took off, the first popular one, because he had also the TRS-80, which is known as the Trash-80, which no one no one liked. But uh, yeah, yeah, the Commodore 64. This one's the, the Kernel 68, I want to say. I don't have the book in front of me, but... Uh, I want to say 84, but... But, yeah, okay. That would make more sense. Um, Kernel 86. Yes. That's what it was. Kernel 86. So, I had him, I had him transposed. Um, but he created it, and the world wasn't ready, but I was getting major kind of Tron vibes. I don't know if you've seen Tron Legacy. There, Connor. I've seen both. Yeah, so, so Clue 2. This is basically what he created. Pretty it's much. A program that was so good at what it needed to do it posed a threat to humanity because humanity is a mess and, and really can't organize. So this program is going to do what they can't. Um, so he basically had to shut it down because it wasn't ready um, for it. But at the end of this, you find out that that's that the people that bought the server bought this computer and they plugged it in and hooked it up to the internet. Yeah. And, and uh, things happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna um, it's gonna go badly. Yeah, it's got a cool vibe to it. It's um, uh, Colonel eighty six introduces itself with "Hello EO," uh, and it's got like a, a cool little monocle kind of. Almost yeah, it's, like it's a, a really nice patch. design in that it, it's yeah. uh, all the negative space is is mm -hmm. just kind of blend into the background. So you have like the, yeah. you know, the, the hair and the eyes and the monocle. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, but what what leads you know the the main. Uh, with, with the Wonder Twins on this, though, is that they go to this country where they're basically persecuting immigrants, and they get involved with with the help of Superman and Batman, which I love that Batman brings them along, and he's like, "Oh, we get to be Superman's backup," and he's like, "No, I'm I'm Superman's backup. You're my backup," which you know you can almost say that's a bigger deal for them to be Superman's backup or yeah. Batman's backup over Superman's. I think for, not for I them like. personally. Right, and uh, basically that's what sets the stage for them um, on their grandpa story that this hit Zan and Jaina both, especially Jaina, who's a bit more of the, I don't say emotional, but much emotionally mature. I think that's fair, yeah. Zan. Yeah, right, of the two that basically they, they got branded with a scarlet letter, uh, not of their undoing, and they're not going to let someone do what their grandfather did on Earth because this is now their new home world, for lack of a... Because they're immigrants themselves, a lot like Superman. Yeah. And yeah, and I love that Mark Russell here uses that Superman story as the immigrant, you know, the story of Moses, mm. as you know, this is what how good they can be for society, and you know, and Zan and Jaina both feel like, you know, the lesson to be learned is don't be like their grandfather. Let's Earth doesn't need to be like this, and but they. Someone got control of a Phantom Zone projector from the cell phone, you know. So that's what they're going to start looking for with with Polly, in order to free her father. Yeah, and uh, you know, yeah. it, it's like, hey, you know, there's there's never been a prison built that couldn't be broken eventually, yeah. and uh, and that's when we cut to, to to see the scrambler stuff. It's it's a yeah. real nice transition because you think yeah. he's planning a breakout, and then he's, he's actually not. No, no, he's still going to scramble at people so people can learn empathy, yeah. which I still like. Mark Russell again, he's. Once he's on his A game, like it's there's nothing. Yeah, this, like this, it right now. The, the the balance in this book between you know, all these serious beats, the, the the funny stuff with them, and then just the the nonsensical social humor commentary. as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The social commentary, of course. Yeah, it goes, yeah. It goes without saying almost. But you know, you have like Flash stood by the microwave, complaining <laughs> that it's taking forever. <laughs> it's too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But, just, you know, Batman go to someone and go, hey, we still on for a movie tonight? He's like, yeah, Gun Cop. I'll see you at half seven. Gun Cop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like Mark Russell a lot. And I, I definitely want to check out Second Coming. Um, 
because yeah. of of stuff like this. And I'm gonna go back and check out the need of the Snagglepuss one and the Flintstones. That sounds um, right. But yeah, Mark Russell, I definitely want to see more in in the DC world, yeah. like more mainstream because of how well he does. Like if you wanted to give him like, and I can't believe it's not the Justice League kind of run <laughs> with some secondary characters. I I don't see I'm why we can't. That. Yeah. Like. Um. Uh, but I'd, just I'd be because... okay if, uh, with him continue working with Burn too, because yeah. even like the, the the action stuff, like you know, uh, there's the the panel where, where Batman pops up uh, in, into action is fantastic looking. Mm-hmm. Um, and he draws a great Superman as well, especially when he's just like hovering. Yep, looks great. And then we get you know fun little art. Like it's what I want to know too if it's if it's Mark Russell giving Burn a little bit more freedom, because like why why does Jada turn into a pterodactyl to save those people and not a giant eagle or a hawk or you whatever i i I mean the simple answer is pterodactyls are cooler yeah but like is that burn because this pterodactyl looks great like it does doesn't it yeah um and just the little things like with with gleek trying to console polly you know yeah uh, trying to give you know it looks like he's trying to give her the apple and whatnot like it's real it's real a lot of good stuff it is it's uh it's a great issue. Pete should definitely, Pete should definitely catch up. Let me take take a little bit of time, Pete. What's up? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, he's trying to keep him on his toes. I, I just, so. I just, I read that in a funny headline that really made me laugh, Uh-oh. which is a prisoner who was serving a life sentence uh, was actually died and was resuscitated and is now trying to argue that he served his life sentence. <laughs> so be like, yeah. <laughs> I saw this earlier and. <laughs> I mean, that's a great argument. Uh, if, you, if you want to try, this and, is uh, something tying it back to Wonder Twins. This is something I see Mark Russell trying to deal with <laughs> on the social commentary side. Yeah. Of it. Maybe, yeah. I mean, obviously, he's probably got life for a good reason, so he shouldn't be let go. But it's just funny. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, it's a funny you, you try. You almost admire the audacity. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Technically, I died. I was pronounced dead. So let me go. Thanks for like, trying. E- every loophole in e- any sort of you know, sci-fi or fantasy story. Is that? Yeah. And why shouldn't you try it? That's pretty funny. Oh man, what if it's like a Black Mirror, but the world that he's he wants to come back to is something that's worse than what what he was dealing with in prison. Honestly, like I think the uh, the only reason that they'll definitively say absolutely not is because you know legality works on precedent cases, and if you set this as a precedent, you'll you'll get people. You know, killing themselves just enough that that, that okay, <laughs> they'll, they'll be like hey. You, you give me some pills, call the doctor, they'll, you know, just wait wait till I'm dead, they'll revive me, I'll be all good, and I'll be out of here. I mean, it's a risky thing, but maybe it's worth the risk if, if you're in prison I, I for life. I can see some, if, if you're in prison for life, yeah, I can <laughs> see someone trying it. Yes, uh, but there you go. Um, so, uh, that'll take us on to the infected King Wait, Shazam. Oh, did you read it? We that. Oh, did you not read no, it? No, we gotta read it. Oh, yeah. Matt, read it. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to give this one an 8. I really enjoyed this. The art, the commentary with, with uh, by Russell and whatnot. Yeah. Connor? Yeah, I'm agreeing with an 8. Yeah. Cool. cool. Which means, right. We'll move King on Shazam. to the Infected King Shazam issue 1. Uh, Sina Grace writing with Joe Bennett on the art. And it's like, Joe well, Bennett? I believe it's, it's Sina. Sina, sorry. Sina Grace. Uh, but Joe Bennett, that's, that's a Mortal Hulk artist. What's, what's he doing here? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Um, so, um, did anyone like this pointless book? I did not. No. <laughs> um, Sign of Grace, I don't want to put it on them. This definitely feels like editorial because this is how Billy was talking in Williamson's version, right? Mm-hmm. And in the Black Adam. However, if you're going to have him be an edgelord, go for it. Have him be the worst version of a teen on the internet, right? Mm. Here, I feel like it's someone pretending to be a teen on the internet. He's going after all the gods and the people who give him his powers. Well, it's just like, in yeah. his dialogue, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it feels very forced. Like, you got to write him like this. You got to write him as a, you know. Uh, and the other parts of the story is, I do take umbrage with him taking out Thor so easily. Like, that's, that hurts. Actually, the only, the only time in the book I even cracked a smile is, what was the line he says at Thor? The first, when we first cut to him with Thor, he yeah. says, uh... I don't know. Nice Look try. Hercules, but I mean, yeah. I guess Thor will do. I don't know, it was only made me laugh because I knew Matt would be upset by it. Uh, honestly, mm-hmm. like, I didn't think the art was... Was it be- just uh, why you got to suck so much, Thor? 
Yeah, it was that. Yeah, yeah, it made me laugh. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, Joe Biden is a good artist. I don't necessarily know if he's suited for Shazam or not, all honesty. No. I agree. I think that's... The, the, the one benefit is it's supposed to be, you know, infected Shazam, so it, it kind of works in that sense that sure. it is this twisted version. Uh, I, I don't think it should look as clean as Shazam usually does. Uh, basically, he's being a dick. He goes after all these gods that he gets his powers from. Mary's kind of, like, aware that something's wrong with them and tries to go and deal with them. Uh, teams up with Ares to try and fight him. Doesn't go very well. And it's like, hey, now you might be infected too. End of book. And honestly, this felt like such a pointless, like, forced editorial, yeah. you know, like, this, we had a tie-in. People go write some one-shots, yeah. even though they, they have nothing yeah. to say. It, it, was, uh, it basically exists to explain why Mary's infected, if that happens. Yes. Um, what did he stab her with, though? He's not holding a battering. I have no idea. Um, um, and it... Because it's only supposed to be the batterings. If, I, if I'm remembering Batman Superman, it's only supposed to be the batterings, not Inth Metal itself. Maybe so, it's like he's infecting it's in his blood. And I mean, maybe the argument is that because they're all connected because of the Shazam family, he can infect the others, but maybe not just anyone. Like, he can infect them. Well, no, because the whole point of why he's searching after the gods is to find one who was worthy enough for him to infect and sure. take onto his side. Yeah. Okay, fair. I, I don't... Yeah. I mean, yeah. basically, I think the Shazam family may all be infected in a future issue of Batman Superman, and this is just here to kind of explain that. When I don't think we ever needed it. I think we just accept it when we no. see them. We'd be like, okay, sure, fine, they're infected too. Whatever. Well, and, and to me, that's the corruption of magic aspect, not so much that he stabbed her in the gut. Yes. With um, it, you know, so... Yeah. But this yeah, is one of those things, is... though. I realised about two three pages in that i wasn't going to like this book and yeah. because of that my I, I was reading i read the rest of it very quickly i was just kind of like skimming the dialogue so very quickly I, I started this book on wednesday and i didn't finish it till this morning just because <laughs> i was like because eh. i i downloaded it to get it out of the way right you know the stuff i don't get physically i i'll read first so i can read my physical books when i get them didn't buy this physically got this digitally and as i'm reading it at work i went no, nah, I'd rather read nothing than read this right now. Uh, so, I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I was pretty tired. I, I, I had an early <laughs> early start. And this was like the last thing I had to read, barring my Patreon book. Yeah. I, I, I was drifting off a little bit during this. I See, and I'd be more upset about this if if Billy wasn't supposed to be so unlikable because of the infection of it. Because some of the dialogue is just straight up bad, but I feel like that's the purpose because not, the rest of the it's dialogue not so bad that it, that you, that it's well written bad. Yeah, like yeah, write that line because the stuff between like Mary and and everybody else feels fine. It's it's the stuff when Billy's just being a little shit like towards the the foster parents. Do you know what's and... really funny about this is we're, we're kind of still on New Fifty Two Billy here, and if mm -hmm. you just go back to the early stuff that Johns was writing, yeah. he was a little shit then. You could just take yeah, that dialogue and put yeah, that into that, this, and it's kind of mostly there already. Yeah, but this has turned up a, a couple more degrees. It is, but know? not in a good way. It's 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 turned up in, in yeah. the not quite the right direction. Yeah, so, I, I get yeah. nothing out of this. This was a wor I, worthless Titan book. Yeah. I I hate the Batman who laughs so much <laughs> for doing this to Billy. And not in a meta way that I'm supposed to. I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, th now I'm worried about about Sky Tyrant, because I, I really take a liking to, to Carter Hall, right? Mm. And I'm worried about mm. Deathbringer. I mean, maybe, maybe those like, other one shots will be good. Maybe get different writers. Maybe they'll have they'll, they'll have something. They'll, they'll think of something I, to say. I but... suspect they'll all feel relatively pointless. They, they, they yeah. this reminds me of like you know like the wedding one shots that we had. Probably, yeah. Um, but hey, sometimes it turns out to be the Dark Multiverse one shots. But it's like, hey, these are actually pretty and en entertaining those... and yeah. seem to be building to something. So whatever but i get nothing out of this absolutely nothing matt what are you in that <laughs> uh this is a, a five five like it's not even like and i like joe bennett i just got caught up on on immortal hulk well up until wednesday's issue um you're probably like one and, or two ahead of me then yeah so like joe bennett's great at monster stuff but i never felt like it this took advantage of that so i want to give it more because i like joe bennett and i've heard good things about sign of grace I just don't feel this was the book for either of them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Carl, we were you in. <laughs> I was yeah, next. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. it took me so long to say that. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if you were deciding whether you wanted to go or not. Then I, I, I have no idea what that was about. But um, just... I, I'm, I'm going to have a four. It's not terrible. It's 
it exists. I don't. I, I don't hate it because I don't care enough to hate it. It's not like offensively terrible. It's just pointless and but boring. No, I agree with the four. Yeah, four out of ten. Mm-hmm. Fine, I'll, I'll I'll abridge mine to to a four point five <laughs> to be to be closer because I don't want them. I don't want people thinking I liked it that much more than you guys because I didn't. <laughs> I missed my grading scale. <laughs> All right, so that is a. Uh... Effective to King Shazam issue one, which will take us on to the Patreon books. I'll explain what these are. Basically, uh, one of the things that you can get on our Patreon, patreon.com slash TV, uh, at the, one of the higher tiers, you can make me or Connor read a book. And uh, Connor's got one. I've got one this week as well. Um, I, I actually have two this month, so uh, there'll be another one for me later in the month. Con- this is actually Connor catching up for last month, because because he was he missed two weeks, he has last month to do, so that's what this he's doing right now. This is Red Hood Outlaw Annual Issue 3, Scott Lobdell writing with Adam. Adam Paulina on the art, so take it away. Um, that's not by saying I quite like the art mostly. There's like some faces look wrong and off, but like the the very first page is uh it, it's it's Red Hood, um you know in his his new red hoodie jacket that he's got, and you can just see you know the the, the red eyes and every, everything else is silhouetted. It's it's the middle of the day, by the way. I should point out, and but he's he's kind of you know walking towards his, his sword in a field. Uh, you know, the swords out, focus in the in the in the foreground. You got this tree behind him, and the colors. Swords out, swords out. Yeah, it's actually a really gorgeous you know first page to, to look at visually. Um, and then you get some of the faces later on, and yeah, uh, faces are not a strong point. So which is probably why this first page works so well with the silhouetted face. Um, but yeah. Uh, Basically, the, Jason's there at the start for like a page, two pages. He, he talks to this kid who can access the powers of dead people or something. Um, he, yeah, he, he can sync the sync abilities with the dead to use their superpowers. And so he gets he get them... eternity. I don't, know. I don't know who this kid is. I don't recognize him. <laughs> okay. Um, uh... But he he calls him Mister Hood, which is always mildly amusing. Um, Mr. Hood. Yeah, but um, that was an Arrested like, Development reference for anyone who didn't get it. He's like, yeah, no, he he can't uh, he can't access their powers. Um, he can't find you know Artemis or Bizarro. So Jason's like, well, they must still be alive then. <laughs> and that's your prologue, and then the rest of it is just uh, Artemis and Bizarro. And we cut back six months uh, to presumably right after they went through their their portal, sacrificing themselves. And they're on another Earth, and they're outside this Earth's version of the Hall of Justice, except it's called the Hall of Punishment. And it's got all these huge, like, spikes coming out of it. It's... Punish! Yeah, it's Punish! Yeah. But um, basically, you learn on this world that uh, there was something called Hero Day, where uh, they don't know who exactly caused it. There's speculation that, oh, it was Lex, or it was Brainiac, or you know, whatever. Um, but basically, every hero lost their powers, every single one of them, and every normal person gained powers, like in the like in the flick of a switch. And um, so, the Hall of Justice or the Hall of Punishment, as it is here, is a a museum of uh, you know, the, of of to to the actual heroes. And the key event is is Superman, body still there, uh, lying dead, squashed underneath the Daily Planet globe. But it's just on top of his head and, you know, and his chest. And you just see, like, legs sticking out from underneath it. Oh, nasty. By and the way, I'm that, like, that right. Punish uh, reference was uh, to Silent Night Deadly Night. I just, I'm, 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 cita- I'm, cita- I'm giving citations for these because I feel like I'm making really obscure references. I'm reading about Kid Eternity, so I'm mostly tuning <laughs> you guys out. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. This, this might have been Kid Eternity. I'm not familiar enough. No, it's not because uh, Kid Eternity is able to tap into... Um, like like, people that have died, like historical figures. So he, he would have mm. to, you know, not so much superpowers, but like, hey, I need Excalibur. So boom, he brings back uh, King Arthur for a minute. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, Artemis tries to summon her axe, uh, and and it doesn't work because and and she's like broken because of it because she's always had her axe. Uh, and then Bizarro gets stabbed by a bunch of the big spikes. Because there's this guy controlling them, obviously. Uh, and then Bizarro you know, pulls himself off the spikes and grabs the dude 
and throws him through the roof into the sun. And it's it's kind of pretty funny, I'm not going to lie. Uh, he literally just, you know, picks him up like, you know, like he's throwing a football, uh, American football style, and just mm-hmm. hurls him up into into the sun. And you're like, all right. Then. And he's just, yeah, wiping his hands, doing the, doing the thing. And I'm like, sure. Uh, but, we, yeah, there's a, you know, a couple other characters introduced. There's, there's this resistance to, you know, the 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 not heroes but everyone has powers that are running the world now they're kind of all terrible you know to run like the this kind of local mob stuff and there's you know a guy called jackknife they, they all have terrible names by the way there was like um air quotes is one of them uh the dairy king uh, they're all just terrible names uh, and this guy is jackknife and he's like leading the resistance against them so then we cut six months later which is you know present day and it, it's this sting, and Bizarro comes out, and he's wearing like you know a, a vest top, yeah, and you know Scott, he's, he's got all his guns out, he's got he's, he's grown a beard, for whatever reason, uh, and he's you know ripping up his mechs and 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 you know doing the fight for them, but Artemis is in prison, uh, for whatever reason she you know Bizarro never rescued her, um, she's doing her own plan with Jackknife, she's you know been getting tased every day you know. The guards are like, you know, step away from the cell. You know the drill. She's like, yeah, I do it every time. I do it your orders, and you tase me anyway. And they're like, oh, not this time. Kidding. And then tase her. But she's just like, all right, well, I've I've taken the taser enough now. So she uses that distraction, and Jackknife just takes a couple of them out. So they prison break. And they run into uh, this world's uh, General Lane, who's, you know, running all of this. And uh, it's it's terrible. He's got a big giant brain Lex Luthor, because Lex Luthor is now just a giant brain on wheels, and like giant brain, like not, you know, not, not just like a uh, a bit big, like huge. I'm thinking, Pete, I know you you've seen this bit of uh, mm-hmm. Doctor Who, uh, the face of Bo stuff. If you recall any of that, I know the face of Bo. I do recall that. Yes. Yeah, kind of looks like that. Um, this is their Lex and. Uh, they're here to kill Lex because you because he's the the brain behind all of the the, the tactics. So they stab him. Because yeah, that's all it takes apparently. Um, but they they open up a door to a new world and and they're off and they're, they're trying to get home to you know to to our Earth, but they don't know if they can manage it. So they just go well, it's it'd probably better than here, and they they jump into the portal to probably come back in the next couple of issues. Yeah, uh, it's not great. <laughs> it's not it's, it's not great i'm shocked uh, no kidding i'm yeah. shocked <laughs> uh, I, I will say the bizarro stuff is the least worst stuff as has often been the case in this book <laughs> the least worst <laughs> yeah um but right, it makes good uh, okay fix that artemis right, was yeah. was Thank pretty you. bad even by artemis's standards i appreciated not having to read jason and his stupid casino shite though that's that's something uh <laughs> I don't know. It's like a three point five. Oh, all right. There you go. Yeah. That's uh, that's Red Hood Outlaw Annual Issue Three. Three. As given to him by one of our patrons. Thank you, David. Right. Uh, so, uh... and then Matt's excited. Matt's actually excited about the one I'm reading because he's yeah. deeply invested in this. So yeah, thank I you. I realized that I would have dug it out of storage and read it. This week, right yeah. time. I've been reading Checkmate. Could I got got a two for because uh, Talking Superman gave me this one, who who became a patron, and Look wanted me that. to read Legion of Three Worlds issue one. He he wanted me to read some more Legion stuff, and this is what he picked. So as a Jeff Johns uh, with George Perez on the art, and so it's such a weird sensation actually having never really read a, read a Legion comic outside of like the first issue of one of the New 52 ones which was terrible and just a mess of characters yeah. and whatever but All right. so it was a weird sensation reading Legion of Superheroes issue 1 by Bendis and then you know I read a few other books and then I went to read this last out of all my books before we started yeah. recording and it was just such a weird like getting two different batches of introductions and like different versions of characters and like mm-hmm. this is actually maybe making this more confusing than it should be um however while I do have some overwhelming criticism this is a longer issue as well it's like it's like 37 pages uh yeah, it's as, almost a yeah. double who who uh, as per comicsology, um, 
I will say, so while I do have some, I think towards the end especially, it started like, introducing me to a lot more characters. I'm like, well, there's no need for these characters to be introduced in this issue. They're, they're not even doing anything, right? Just wait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, however, I think this is better than the Bendis issue I read today. Mm-hmm. And I think the key thing it did here is that while it does set up some Legion stuff and it sets up this idea that the uh, the the United Planets are basically wanting to disband the Legion because they don't think they're useful anymore. And we have the creator of the Legion of Superheroes, this, uh, this uh, RJ Brand. RJ Brand, thank you. Uh, he comes out and he's like, speaking on their behalf. As much as we have this stuff, which is doing an okay job of kind of setting up that we're in this time where they're kind of being looked at as being kind of lame and behind the times and we have to move on, you have to grow up. Because they're, they're all adults now. Like They're, they're all still yep. calling themselves Lightning Lad and so, whatever. But So did you read John's uh, action comics run? Because this is what's seated in, in that, in Superman and the Legion. I, I read that run, but not that arc. The okay. best arc. Yeah, it's so good. I, I it's read not Gary Frank. I read, you know, Pete. Brainiac, Escape from Bizarro World. I read yeah. Last Sun. I read all those Pete, arcs. Seriously, do yourself a favor. Oh, it's so good. Like, so I'll get so to it at some point. What, what people have to know to get up to this to this point is that this is post Infinite Crisis, but before Final Crisis. Sure, sure. It's happening as Final Crisis is getting started. Oh, hold on, hold on, I was going. I was getting okay. to a point because okay. like, so so they have got all this stuff, and it's kind of setting up what the Legion's doing at this point in mm-hmm. time, right? That's all fine. What makes this issue work is the setup of the actual villain plot, which is Superboy Prime, and mm-hmm. him going through this museum, this Superman museum, in the year three thousand, um, mm-hmm. you know, in Kansas and Smallville, and he's like seeing all this stuff, and essentially what it is is he's going through, he's seeing some of the story of Superman's creation, and he's like sort of scoffing at it, and he's like complaining at the, the the Jimmy hologram that's explained. He's like the 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 curator going through, showing everyone everything, and they get to the villains, and he is upset that he doesn't seem to be there, and then eventually finds a statue of himself in a storage closet that's just there <laughs> because no one cares about Superboy Prime. And when he asks about it, he's like, this is me, why, 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 why is this not out front? He's like, oh, this is a minor villain from Superman's past, this was, you know, he was barely a, not an annoyance, like, no one cares about Superboy Prime, and he just, like, he gets so angry, and starts, like, because the, the issue is, the cliffhanger, it ends with, they, they call Superman in because whatever they see, we don't see it yet, we don't see it till the last page what they've seen that makes them call in Superman from present day. But when Superman arrives and they look at this this prison planet uh, where the, you know, the, the legion of uh, supervillains has, has been broken out by Superboy Prime, he's left like the, like the, the, the Superman S like burned into the entire planet. Right, yep. <laughs> and he's he's got the the super villain, legion of super villains out, and I've never really encountered you know the the evil versions, you know, the the older brothers yeah. and sisters that are, uh, you know, not lightning lad, lightning lord, and uh, right. Saturn Queen, Saturn and Queen, and, and Cosmic King, Cosmic King, yeah, and um, yeah. they're new to me, and it's like you know what, so well there was a bit of overwhelmingness to some of the extra characters because you know because it gave me the caption box to explain who people were early on and it, it gave me like the core three that i needed uh it gave me a couple others that came in because it did a really neat job of like in the museum stuff setting up the backstory with the rg uh what was his name rj brand rj brand it set yeah. him up in the museum stuff because the jimmy explains this to superboy prime so when he shows up as because they mentioned that he's been that you know he's been missing for a long time he's disappeared mm-hmm. so when he shows up later in the, the, the big like, hearing that they're having with the legion of superheroes it actually meant something to me because the book actually introduced that earlier on and it wasn't just this lost moment so that was kind of interesting. Um, and sure. it, it, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting seeing this comparison here. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I've obviously not read either of these issues, but just the idea of, you know, this is this is a, a John's issue one of a uh, of a Legion book versus Bendis, and yes. they, they were kind of there. You know, they were they were opposite numbers for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of this interesting take on seeing. Okay, now that they're on the same project, so to speak. Ha, ha, what's the different approach? So. Yeah, so whereas Bendis gets a story and that's what he's gonna do, he's really not one for retcons. Whereas that's that's Johns's bread and butter. It and really is, isn't it? Effectively, this is a retcon for the overall history of the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, actually, remind me something because I've read Final Crisis, obviously, but it's been like ten mm-hmm. years at this point. Um, the the hooded figure at the start of this book who sends Superboy Prime into uh-huh. the year three thousand is that is that a figure from the main Final Crisis book or is it someone that I don't no, know yet because it's going to be explained in this. That is a Legion of Superheroes okay. villain called Time Trapper. Okay, all right, yeah. that's okay then. Yeah. I was worried I was yeah. forgetting something from Final Crisis yeah. that would have explained that. So basically, this was a this was going to be a mini series 
by itself. And then they put the final crisis on there to mm. kind of explain where Superman was while a lot of this stuff was going on. Um, that makes sense. Cause it, so, all, all yeah. on the possibility of the villain who sends Superboy prime there, there was nothing that felt like it tied it into final crisis, uh, at yeah. least in this issue. So that makes sense to me hearing that. Um, cause one, one of the things that they, they sort of get into is the idea that there's a lot of xenophobia on earth and also other planets. So on yeah. earth, there's a lot of humans who hate the aliens who now live here, but we also yeah. hear that on the other planets they all hate humans. So there's kind of this right. like you know twofold thing and going. So that, that's where I was going to get to was in uh, you know Infinite Crisis. This kicks a lot of stuff off, and then Johns takes over on action, and you he brings back the Legion of Superheroes through like the the Lightning Saga, and and Justice Society. So that all leads to them coming back in the lightning saga and basically someone's been messing with time. So this is a continuation of, of the lightning saga and his run that he gets pulled to the future, sees what it's become. And there's a guy that is basically twisting the Superman legend of him standing for truth, justice, the American way in a xenophobic way. And that's Earthman. So you, you get introduced to him yeah, I heard the, in yeah, the beginning of this. His name pops up a few times. Yeah. Right. Um, um, but yeah, so yeah, that, this is basically. That, that, I mean, stage. what you're describing here is make Earth great again. That's what that's essentially that, what you're describing. That's a, and it's amazing that this was like eight, nine years before all of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, but that's essentially what you're describing. I, I think. If I've got to make complaints about this issue, I do think some of the pages are overstuffed with panels. Yeah. There, was, there was maybe three or four pages out of the, the whole book where I, I, I turned the page and went, holy shit, this is too much on one page. This looks overwhelming. Yeah, that's that's George Perez art for you, though, because he's yeah. going to fill the page. With, and the fact that, you know, that, that Johns grew up loving the George Perez stuff, that he's just given him carte blanche to do what he wants. So, yeah, I, I get that as a, as a problem with it, but... For what this book does, and there's so many characters in play, like... Is this a relatively minor complaint? I mean, honestly, the biggest problem yeah. I had, I didn't know this was a longer book, so I timed this to start the... You know, so I'd, re I'd finished reading it right before we were ready to start, and I ended up being late because the book's twice as long as I thought it was. Yeah. So, uh, but other than that, like, I have very little to complain about. Uh, I was really into Superboy Prime. I've always kind of dug his character, to yeah, be honest. Such a, um, yeah. And him him being pissed that he's not this remembered foe in the future and wanting to like make a, a claim for himself in the year 3000 is really kind of exciting. Um, now, admittedly, it was kind of a, a low-key week for me. You know, I had a lot of sixes and sevens in my ratings, mm -hmm. but this was easily the best thing I read today. <laughs> so, kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it may have stood a chance anyway in a lot of decent weeks, but like... This week, it shouldn't be easily. It shouldn't be easily, but it was easily this week. This was, this was, this was great. So, so thanks, talking Superman, because it was very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I will happily, happily rate this a nine out of ten. Yeah, buddy. So, <laughs> hope hopefully stuff. you get why I love the uh, Legion so much at the end of this, and you'll want to go back and. Uh, have you read the Lightning Saga, Pete? No. The JLA J JSA crossover? No. Okay. So that that's I, I would say if you have time, I know time's a, a luxury for you anymore. But uh, no. after you get through this, I go back and read that stuff. Yeah, I, I very, very good. I you know, I like I I have you know, one of my big things when I was getting into DC comics was going back to like the mid two thousand stuff and reading a lot of what Johns was doing. Uh, and this is just a whole little pocket that I hadn't really done yet. So it was really exciting reading this, and yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, sure. Outside of the three core uh, legionnaires, I couldn't name you any of them because at the end it was like giving me Shadow Lass and other weird things that I didn't know. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to these later because that's the that's the other one other scene actually I forgot to mention is there was a scene where Brainy Brainy and some of the others are rescuing Monel out of the Phantom Zone. Uh, yeah. So there's a little subplot there that's setting up other stuff. So I should mention that too. But. All right, and that was also set up in the James Robinson stuff that was going on, I think, after? I can't remember the exact time frame. But yeah. we saw the mon -El origin, so we saw him get put into the Phantom Zone because of the lead poisoning. And then Johns brings him back out so he can be part. You'll there, There's more when you get there. And it was um, a Phantom Girl who's able to like touch him because she's also a Phantom. Yeah. Whereas everyone else was like, no, you can't touch him because... 
Did we come oh, that made me that made me miss uh terrifics now that you said that <laughs> oh and yeah yeah I just, the, the, the books just stopped being exciting right you know it got very kind of mundane it did but you know it just reminded me of my phantom girl yeah that's good uh so there you go uh, that's uh, Legion of Three Worlds issue one. Uh, so that'll take us out of the part of the show where we pick our favourite stuff of the week. We do our favourite panel slash moment, favourite cover, favourite art, and top five books of the week. Uh, and I'm not allowed to put my Patreon book just for the record, even though it would be number one <laughs> if I if I could. So yeah, they don't really count, do they? No. Uh, so we'll start off with panel slash moment. Matt, how's with it? Oh man. Uh, it's probably going to be from Young, Young Justice or, well, it's either Young Justice or Lois, or it could be Justice League. I didn't really give this one this much thought. <laughs> He's panicking now. Yeah. But, you know, you know it's going to be from Justice League. It's uh, the Doom thing over the the double-page spread, mainly just for Catman. It's good to see Thomas Blake get some proper love and not, not be used as a punchline. So, yeah, I'll go with that one. Connor? Well, that was going to be mine. Oh, uh, dang. Sorry, so man. I, and that's fine. I'll switch. I'll go to the next page where it's going through the through the universe rather than just on Earth, and, mm-hmm. and it builds up to the world, Ori. Because uh, uh, that, that really gave me the sense of scale of where we were going for the end of this story. And, uh, yeah, that, that got me into it good. Mm. Yeah, well, since I can't pick Superboy Prime, uh, hearing that he is he's forgettable and is not deserving of being out in the... Uh, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember what villain it was, but like, the Jimmy Hologram's like, oh, no, he's just sitting here to inst- until the, 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 the other ones get back from the shop. And it was like some D-less villain that no one ever talks about, but he's getting repainted. <laughs> he's coming back. Uh, I made me laugh. Anyway, um, so my... Yeah, which kind of weird would be for me. Um, I would probably go... Uh, I, yeah, I guess I'm going with the Young Justice as well. I, I think I'll probably go with um, probably that full page spread after Jenny's like uncovered her powers and uh, what's in the box, and there's a big tall version of her and multiple others, but with the rest of the team. That's a pretty good one. It's, it's, it's a good page. I, I like how P said he's going to go with Young Justice as well, as if me and Matt didn't both pick from Justice League. Yeah. Oh, I thought so, I thought Matt picked from Young Justice. Sorry. No. It was the... I just didn't listen to a thing Matt said, or me, because I, I talked about how Matt had picked what I was going to say. <laughs> I heard the start of what Matt said, because he was pondering Young Justice, and then I, I stopped listening because yeah. I was thinking what my pick was going to be. <laughs> <sighs> ah, well. Uh, favorite uh, cover, Matt, what you got? Um, let me double check this one. Uh, think it, not a it, lot of standout covers this week. No, but I think it's the Legion uh, variant. It's got the, the three main ones on the front there. It's out of the Young Justice variant, and I, I like them equally, but I need to give Legion some love because it's Legion. So It's a, it's just, yeah. it's a lukewarm week all around, I think. At least for me, yeah. it is. I don't know like if that's I had, a... I had a, a couple of bright spots. I don't know. It's a lukewarm. Um, Connor, what's your cover of the week? I think I'm going to go with the Justice League variant. Um, it's, it's all right. It's kind of nice. Um it's not my favorite cover, you know, out of some of the weeks that we've picked these, it doesn't stack up against most of those, but I just don't think it's a great week for covers. I like the idea that just league cover is just it's a bit too smooth looking for my uh Yeah, I get that. For my tastes. Um I'm just looking at some of the variants now to see if any of them stick out at me. Um Um I don't mind that Batman variant. I suppose. I'm not big on it actually. I thought I, I clicked on it because I thought that looked interesting, and then I don't know something about it just didn't really like. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Uh, best uh, art of the week then. Hmm. Who's going first? You. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's it's hard for me to pick against Manipole, but looking over Young Justice, so that one-two punch of of Thames and Darrington. It, it's yep. real solid, so that's who I'm going with. Connor? Mm, so, um, mine would be between Manipole or Burn for Wonder Twins is the only other contender, I think, for me. Although, I mean, Jan is, is perfectly good. Yeah. But I, don't think it's, cause I, I actually think I enjoyed the others a bit more. Uh, maybe it's partially because of the story they were telling I enjoyed more, though. Um, I am going to give it to Justice League. 
But, you know, the, the art was pretty good across all those books. I mean, as much as we weren't kidding the book, I do think Yannin was really good on Batman, despite... No, yeah. he, he was, and he, yeah. he doesn't do a single thing wrong. The problem is just the story's not there, so the art kind of feels a little bit hollow. When I, when, cause I, it's, yeah. it's hard to divorce it that entirely from the story. Uh, I mean, I think Stuck's really good on Legion as well, so uh, I would give him a shout out. But I'm probably going to go Young Justice as well. I, I think the combo of Darrington and Tim's uh, just really works for the book, so uh, I'll get my, my vote. Matt, what's your top five books of the week? So, number one is Young Justice, number two is Lois Lane, number three is Wonder Twins, number four is Legion, number five is Justice League. All right. Yeah. Connor, what's your top five? Uh, Justice League number one, Lois at two, and Wonder Twins at three. And then, <laughs> wow, well, it's 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 infected King Shazam and Batman. What do I give a shit either way? You gotta go with Batman because King Shazam was real bad. Uh, yeah, That's, yeah, fine. Yeah, there you go. He's peasy. <laughs> uh, my number one is Young Justice. My number two is uh, Legion. Number three is Lois Lane. Number four is Justice League number five is Batman I guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. but the, there's such a big split in my books because those top three that I, I liked I really like those three books and then it dives off a cliff for the other two so we're weak if this was your first ever episode of this show I want you to know that I am typically a lot more positive than this it's just been a it's just yeah a usually now. it's Connor that's the degrader yeah yeah it's just, just one of those weeks. Sometimes it happens. But Legion of Three Worlds was really good, though. I mean, <laughs> I was just throw that out there. There you go. That was a pick me up after the, after my week of books. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, all the books from this week. I will I will tell you now what is coming next week. Um, should be a busy week. I think the rest of the weeks this month are busier. So coming next week, we have Batman and the Outsiders number seven. We have Batman's Grave issue two, which I should still be reading because I, I like that first issue. Um, was I the one who read that? No, I kind of tried no, it. I, I read that. I didn't love it. Though, yeah, so I, I mean, with time being a fact, I will yeah. likely not bother. Uh, Catwoman seventeen is out. Um, we have Detective Comics one thousand fifteen. Is we this have... the Tom Taylor issue yet? No, no, that's the same. That's December's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dollhouse Family number one is out, so that's the next to the Hill House book, so I'm excited yeah, for that. Yeah. The final issue of Event Leviathan, that's number yes. six, is out next week. Far Sector number one, the Green Lantern Mini that's starting, uh, yeah, which I'm yeah. intrigued to try. I'm uh, very excited by the prospect of it, and yeah. and you know I've already ordered that McKelvey variant. I was going to say, Connor, yeah, you, you have to, right? My shop's already holding it, don't worry. I'm just yeah. excited to be reading the Green Lantern thing again. Quite, yeah, right? quite frankly <laughs> uh, we get the Flash number 82 we have Gotham City Monsters number 3 Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy number 3 is also out um, are you still reading that Matt? is that going to be? yep I, I got caught um, up so expect cool. that one no, no one's reading Gotham City Monsters are they? no nah, okay. uh, um, Hawkman 18 is out next week uh, you two will be reading that mm -hmm. um, we have Just League Odyssey 15 is out obviously none of us have been reading that for a while uh, we have Superman 17 coming out next week and finally, we have Wonder Woman 82. Um, uh, yeah, you actually vision. missed over a, uh, a oh, Tales sorry. from the Dark Multiverse, yeah. Uh, yeah. Blackest Night. Tales from the Dark Multiverse for Blackest Night, yeah. That one's easy to skip over on this list, actually, because most of the books yeah. I mentioned have two, because there's always a variant. So my yeah. eye isn't good at well, catching the singles. I have a after, question. Yeah. What? Uh, are any of us reading Wonder Woman? Wait, is this? It's Orlando now. This is Orlando's first the, issue. The, the, uh, the annual last week was Orlando, and this is his first proper issue. I may try it. <laughs> Matt's, <laughs> Matt's, Matt's scouring. Reading the, yeah, I'm re uh, no. I'd rather read Ivy and Harley. Sure. I think. So. Yeah, yeah, me too, for sure. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I'm not going to make any promises, though, because there's a lot of books next well, week. Also, so. Far Sector. I mean, Far Sector and Dollhouse Family. Oh, I'm excited ID. for Dollhouse Family. I'm reading that for sure. Yeah, so I don't have time for... This year. Sorry. That's yeah, fine. Three, four, five. Sorry, Diana. I feel terrible, but not really. <laughs> um... Yeah, maybe, maybe on the next run. Oh, yeah, I've got eight books. I not too bad. I may do my other Patreon book next week. Uh... Because I think the the weeks after are, are a little bit busier for me, so I'll, yeah, I'll do that I next week. Check which, because I've still got two more to get through this month, so I might have to see uh, 
Which which weeks are the, the bad ones? <laughs> and if they're all equally bad, you just have to suck it up and make two of them worse. Yep. Yep. So there you go. That's what's coming next week on the show. So that pretty much wraps up uh, the episode of Comments from the Multiverse. Um, of course, I will tell you that you can support the show and everything we do in a couple of different ways. Obviously, like, subscribe on YouTube and comment, let us know what you think of the books. And you can ding the bell to make sure you get notifications there. You can also support us by rating the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Uh, give us five stars, nice little review. It makes us, uh, you know, puts it up higher on, you know, lists and charts and things like that. They recommend us out a little bit more. More people will find us. So that's a good way to support us. As is uh, doing so financially over in patreon.com slash uh, where you can read, us make books, uh, read books at the higher tiers, of course. But you can, of course, support us for as little as one dollar per month and feel warm and fuzzy inside and keep the content coming um you know one dollar is not a huge amount but it means a lot to us so if you want to give us that on a monthly basis uh consider it and you will be loved i mean we love you all anyway but you'll be especially loved yeah matt, we, we, we have favorites matt, matt will uh do a little hearts and kisses for you in a text message or something sure <laughs> see he sounds excited by the prospect um uh, so uh, disclaimer I was joking there there'll be no hearts and kisses in a text message from that I will not, never promise that because that would be a foolish thing to promise I don't want sued thank you uh, so, <laughs> uh, so you, you can uh, get it in a tweet from him though sure yeah maybe maybe I'll we'll tweet you uh, but that is uh, that's how you can how you can do that you can also follow us on Twitter of course at DC Comics Podcast for updates occasional retweet news things and things like that um and get any updates. Uh, obviously, it's worth mentioning that me and Connor do the TV version of this show every week, Television from the Multiverse, where we review the CW shows, and uh, they've been pretty rough recently, so it's just us being miserable and making fun of them for the most part, so... Yeah, at least I get to be drunk for half the shows. <laughs> True. Yeah, go, go, go back and, and watch Connor uh, try to text on Twitter me and Tim the other night. Yep, Tuesday or Wednesday nights, every week, folks. Mm -hmm. Well, every week that Arrow and Flash are on, which yes. right now is every week. I'll be so honest. you you said hashtag blame Arrow, right? Yeah. That was your your thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought you were trying to say broke Arrow, trying to make a broken Arrow pun <laughs> while you were your tipsy. So yeah, nah, that, that I'll be honest. Been, that was way too smart for me when I'm drunk. That this yeah. season, Supergirl may be more worldly the drunk viewing than Arrow was, to be honest. Yeah, it, it actually might. But I don't want to break tradition with Arrow now, like six <laughs> episodes from the end. Yeah. Well, we have a mutual friend on, on Twitter who's a, a big supporter of, of Supergirl, and even she isn't isn't down. That's why I haven't caught up. It's a rough season. Let, let me put it this way. When yeah. Arrow ends in January, and there's still the rest of the season to go of Supergirl, there's, a, a, barring some significant improvement over the next, you know, eight weeks, that uh, there is likely a Good chance it'll be swapped in on the drunken viewings. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there you go. So check out that. Take check out that podcast if you're interested. Uh, obviously, we do movie podcasts and stuff. Sci-fi movie podcast called The Atomic Cinema Experiment. Horror movie podcast called Screams After Midnight. Uh, these are worth uh, having a look at if you're into movies and and so on and so on. Uh, but uh, that is that is us. That has been episode one eighty. I think we're on one eighty. Did you want me to check? I, I'm pretty sure the last one was one seven nine. I'm pretty sure. You're all right. You're on one eight. Nice, nice. It goes. You know, it's weird. It's weird that we we don't celebrate like uh, like the anniversary of when we started because it's so close to like the hundreds. Because because the hundreds are, you know, because a year's fifty two weeks, right? So it's so close to the anniversary when we when we have a sale. It's it's not until unless we go long enough that the the two weeks every time moves it far enough away from when the anniversary is that it's worth actually celebrating both. Yeah, I think we did it the first year because 52 was DC's number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We celebrated so that, that as our first milestone. But that, ever that since then, it's, you know, it's 100, 200, you know. Yeah, yeah. So on. Um, but yeah, so. We're getting, yeah, we're getting kind of close to 200. We'll be, we'll be hitting 200. What? Early next year? Hey, if we do what Marvel does and count in the annuals and extras that we've done, we'll be, get there even sooner. We're not going to do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll game yeah. the numbers just like they do. We have we integrity. Have integrity. <laughs> <laughs> and Coley Connor doesn't, so yeah. f first well, to be yeah, fired. I, do it. I said we could. First to be fired is Connor. Hey, That's hey, hey, Connor, what are the three eyes? Uh Pete. Intelligence, intensity, intensity and integrity. 
There you go. So before we go, I don't plug these all often because uh, I I, uh, I I've, I've just been forgetting to honestly. But someone actually bought a hoodie this this past couple of weeks, so I, oh, I checked. Nice. So I just want to reiterate that you can get merch. You can get a comics from the multiverse hoodie or shirt or whatever a hat uh, or a spread shirt store. There's one for the UK and the US. There's links in the description, so make sure you have a look there. And if I've done my job properly, I made a little graphic to pop up that I can put in the edit of like some of the shirts and stuff. <laughs> so. It should look fancy. That, that may or may not be there. Yes. Uh, it'll cover Connor's face, probably, because it'll be in that corner of the screen. So, I'm okay uh, with that. Look forward to that. Uh, and also, before we go, something I want to start doing here in some of our shows is actually audibly give you uh, our producers from Patreon, who are at the $20 tier or above, because uh, they have to, they get the name at the end on the screen, but for the audio people, and to make you feel a bit more special. So, uh, thank you to Tyler Hess, Talking Superman, David Shaw, Alison M. Fordis, and Cindy Palacios. Thank you to our producers. Yeah, so we're wrapping up the show. One, one eighty. Um, uh, patrons will get a nice like thirty minute chunk of random conversation that we just had there um, <laughs> over the next day or two uh, as a bonus bit. You get that the one dollar tier and up. Uh, you get all these little bonus tangents. But that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep reading DC Comics, guys, and remember to never get lost in the Speed Force. Long live the Legion.